It's my swole shirt. Yo, yo, yo. Mallory Rose Podcast, episode 121. Happy Friday. Yes, sir. Uh, welcome to October. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about how, you know, I don't write a date on a, a paper anymore. You know how you used yeah. to go to school? That was when I was keeping up with my dates the most. So when you had a, a job where you actually have to write uh-huh. the date, maybe you used to fuck the year number up and have to scratch that drain out. Yep. And it just made me think, damn, we are in October, mm-hmm. two months away from 2023. And yeah. I'm not trying to speed y'all life up. I'm just saying we're in 10 now. Yeah. Like, we're not, it's not nine, it ain't eight. I said, damn, hold up. It's 10 oh. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at tickets for this event and I said, hold on, wait, the next month is November. What? Thanksgiving next month. Thanksgiving plans? It felt like this year just went by. It just went. I, I disagree. I felt like this year was pretty long. I Hell felt no, January, was, February, March, April. I've, I've been, I've been atta- attached with all of these years. To me, it was just Easter. My birthday was a couple months ago. I say September. Damn, see, some people, everybody looking at it different. I think this month been going by Now, nah, you know what? Now that I think about it, Valentine's Day seemed like two years ago. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> this, this year has been long. Uh, I do think September was the fastest month of this year. Nah, for real. That was a crazy that fast That shit year. flew by. And you know what? I do. I write a calendar. I do have a calendar in my room. I write like an out of calendar every month. Yeah. And so for me, and I have a picture of everyone. Mm-hmm. September, I did nothing. It seemed like, like it yeah, just yeah. went by. Mm-hmm. It was like a I don't know, like a I don't I can't even explain it. If you're looking at the visual podcast, shout out to you. Shout out to the people that's watching on YouTube. Hit the like button. Hit the like button and help us out, man. That's gonna get the video some some traction. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I figured we just start saying that, you know. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. I don't know why you're talking about me. What the fuck are you sitting here looking like, boy? I wish, if you're listening, I wish you could see this man. But if you're watching, what does y'all think that he looks like right now? I'm on my chill. You look bland as fuck, boy. This nigga looks like a wee character with that shirt on. Bland ass color shirt, boy. This is basic shit. You look like you got that from Facebook.com, like shit, the clothing section, boy. That looks like you got it from Facebook. Okay, let's talk about you and your Brillo beard. Basic ass shirt, boy. Let's talk about you and your Brillo beard. Brillo beard? Nigga, you have the or same beard scrub, as me. But you can use, when you wash dishes and you come across some 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 grease or something, some you know how food get cooked on the pan, you put the rag down and put your chin in the bowl and just do that. <laughs> <laughs> visual pod, visual pod watches. Who think about the look at the beards? This nigga beard looking scruffy as fuck, boy. My beard is actually tough. Well, we're not about to talk about this. But that shit looks rough. My as beard fuck. is soft. Your beard is sharp, boy. You can is hold it? up a bank. Is it? Do you want to feel it? Look, uh, no, no, how much it? Well, Tanner, can't even no, say that. Absolutely not. You never, you'll never touch me. But I said, did you want to touch my beard? Absolutely not. Pause. <laughs> Piss the nigga off. You can hold up a bank with your beard. You don't even need a gun. You just hold up the lady and put your chin on her neck. And they like, hold up, hold up. What do you want? You look like an extra like shit with that shit on, boy. You look like an extra. Look, they just started fighting when they started the podcast. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Niggas got seven minutes in. <laughs> he got me fucked up. <laughs> Episode, this episode be 13 <laughs> minutes long. The intro and then that. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Intro was fire. We still put it out. On the heels of last weekend, Terrence's movie suggestion of the week I was... I got that on my pod, Doc. Terrence's movie suggestion of the week was to go see Smile. And I'm going to just tell y'all real quick. Um, it was my one-year anniversary. Shout out, Bay. It was my one year. And so we went to this little ring-making class where we, like, made... They, you, like, melt the metal down. Why and, you not wearing it? Because it didn't go with my gold. But you like melt the the metal down. It goes with your love. Your king. So you should be wearing it for your girl. And give one to your daughters. Give one to your daughters and your sons. <laughs> 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 but you melt the uh, the metal down, whatever. And then uh, she was like, yo, my brother wants to go see that movie. So if you want to go when we, when we leave here, we can. I was like, bet. All right, bet. That's the one that Terrence said to go see. Mind you, that Terrence has seen it before me. I'm gonna let him get his shit off. But now nah, we saw it the same. We saw I saw it the day before you. So it wasn't That's like I said you oh, saw okay, it before yeah. me the day before. And he told me it was scary. But went to the uh, what's what theater we go to? Sinopolis. Let me tell you, they got a churro donut that is a fucking amazing. I have never been in a theater and be, you ever had something so good you want to look and tell somebody. That's crazy. A churro donut. I would never think to get that at the movies. But I'm just different. I get popcorn when I go to the movies. 
I'm I had I went crazy. I had nachos and queso, and I had a full meat lovers pizza. Pause. And then I had a uh. How do you have to say pause for a fucking pizza? Because that's what people do, Terrence. No, it's not. It's bullshit. <laughs> That's crazy. And you had a meat lovers a... pizza. Continue. We then know I... what that is. Do you think we're Man, talking I about even penis? Say on, on, do you think we're, we? Do you think we thought you said penis pizza on Twitter? What did I say the other day? And a nigga was like, I had to pause. I'm just don't be wanting to get caught up by niggas. That's crazy for niggas to be thinking about penis when you say meat lovers pizza. Whoa, hold on, wait. So what? What do you? What's on your mind if we talking about pizza? Oh, we put had... out the Frank Ocean joint, and I said forty minutes of Frankie. Hella niggas was like, oh, what's wrong with y'all niggas? And then y'all want to get mad when these girls say, don't like when a woman complains? You're gay. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to pay for the bill? Must be gay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, go ahead. I had a meat lover's pizza and I had that churro donut. We what? was eating good in the field. Oh, let me say this real quick. That's a, that's a crazy meal to eat while watching a movie. <laughs> Then they got a churro donut and a meat lover's pizza. <laughs> what fucking did are y'all going to? Let me tell to? you, with the Sinopolis, let me tell you something. They have, there's, there's like, I think 14, 15 in the United States. They, they, they relatively small, but they're growing. But Brody, that pizza, it had ham, sausage, pepperoni, and I don't really do much pork, but I said fuck it for the weekend. Uh, ham, sausage, pepperoni, little chicken. It was just hella meat. Pause. <laughs> But look though, Shit is ridiculous. that movie is scary as fuck. That movie was terrifying. I have not seen a movie that scary since I think Insidious. <laughs> because I was telling Candace, the um, paranormal activity joints was scary, but it was more so like yeah. whatever scary. You know what I'm saying? Like it was some of them joints were scary because it was too real. But this joint. Insidious scared the fuck out of me. That movie, that movie, the Insidious films were scary. This joint was, was, this was the first time I was as scared as I was as when I seen that. I mean, like, we was nicked. I ain't gonna lie, I was nicked too. And I had a fucked up movie experience, y'all. So Dayton, before, when I went on, when I went to the movies, it was Jolly Late. And I said, you know what, I'm not trying to go to the movies and get a fucking... Meat lovers pizza and churro donut. I didn't have an appetite for that. I'm gonna try to get some popcorn, but I'm gonna eat something before. Uh, to my convenience, Terrell is in the kitchen making some uh, some baked chicken, and I said, you know what? Fuck it. I normally fry wings. This nigga made some baked chicken, some rice, some uh, some green beans. You know, a basic non-harmful meal. Basic meal. I said, bet. I don't know what I don't know what happened, but I ate about five wings. All the rice, green beans. I was feeling good. I got to the movies, but when I got in my in my car, all of a sudden, like, I just my stomach just felt like naughty, if that makes any sense. Like I'm like, damn, it felt like somebody was flipping some shit over in my stomach. But it was cool though. It's just like, all right, it's just doing its thing. You know what I'm saying? Get in the movie theater, get the popcorn and shit. <laughs> I got large popcorn, and let me tell you, that popcorn is fire. That movie theater we went to, the AMC. That movie, that popcorn is fire. Do but you ever eat all the popcorn? I eat most of the popcorn, but nah, I never eat all of it. Every time I get popcorn, I'll eat like 40 kernels and that's it. Nah, I, and I think popcorn is like a legit snack. I don't think you should be, if, if you get into the part where you pulling the bag like this <laughs> and eating the rest of the popcorn, you're a savage. You're supposed to be snacking and have something to throw away. Some people do bottomless popcorn and they go back. That's ridiculous. Think about it, that's a bullshit perk too. I'm a Stubbs member. They said bottomless popcorn, free popcorn. Do you know how much of a savage you got to be to finish your popcorn, get up mid-movie, up the front, <laughs> I'm here for my refill. <laughs> Nigga, if you don't get your hungry ass up, I would be sick as fuck. If I said, damn, you getting a refill? Nah, but you know Somebody get this nigga his refill. People, somebody put me on game. What you do is you eat half your bag, then the bottom is cold, so you go back and get a fresh bag so you can have your second half of your bag be hot. If you're that focused on your food during the movie, then you're you just need to just have eight before. <laughs> you missing the movie. But look, this is the point, y'all. Remember I told y'all my stomach was flip was flipping. So when I sat down, I said, you know what? My stomach being dumb and shit. Movie starting. The commercials was easily 40 minutes. We went open the night. The the commercials was easily like 40 minutes. So we started watching them. I mean the movie took forever to come on. Then the movie finally started. And like you said, 
That joint was scary as shit to stop. Mm. But I had a whole different experience. I said, you know what? I'm going to eat some of this popcorn, you know? Help my stomach out. I had the raspberry uh, high C. I mean, that's just my steez right there. That's what I do. Drink some of that. Raspberry high C. Yep. Drinking some of that. Eating the popcorn. And I'm like, man, my stomach tripping. We get halfway through the movie. And I had, it was a cold red, y'all. Do you know how embarrassing that is? I dead ass had to be like, yo, I about to go to the bathroom real quick. <laughs> and that movie was scary as shit. I was, I literally was in the bathroom, dolo. Nobody came in the bathroom after that. Yeah, that's and then, look, terrifying. My stomach was fucked up in the movie. I'm not going to lie, y'all. And, and y'all know I like to keep it 100 with y'all. My stomach was fucked up. I said, this is I need to leave bad. <laughs> it is. And I and I look, I text my, you know what I'm saying? I text my girl, I was like, yo, I'm about to come back, but you know, <laughs> we, I'm keeping it a hundred. I I was in the bathroom easy 20 minutes. I done missed. Terrell told me, did you see the part where I was like, what? When did that happen? Oh, my dumb ass is in the bathroom. The worst part, I go back to watch the movie. And yes, the movie's scary. I don't mean to take the no, you got, off you the got movie. It, you got it. But like, I'm watching the movie and I'm enjoying it, but low key, I'm waiting for that joint. Cause I'm like, oh, my stomach was rocky. My stomach was like, nigga, you thought we were, nigga, you thought it was done? <laughs> Bro, that was the worst shit. I never was quick. I was trying to get home fast as hell. That was the worst. I, I look, I had to run upstairs, came right in, went right to the bathroom. It was ridiculous. I'm sorry. I know that might be TMI for some of y'all if y'all eating or whatever. I'm not trying to fuck up y'all appetite. But think about me for a second. Instead of thinking about yourself, that was a fucked up ass experience. But away from that, the movie was definitely scary as shit. I felt good as shit telling people to go see that joint. You don't have an emergency stash of pills and medicine in your car? I do. I got headache medicine and pain pills, but I don't got like Pepto-Bismol or Tums in it. I got an emergency stomach, um, the little Ivy Guard pills. Okay. I, take. I, got emer I got those, Excedrin, I mean, what are you, I mean, you're in a movie there. What are you going to do? Run to your car real quick and take an Ivy Guard. Let that mint get in your system. That Ivy Guard going to make you have to go. Your stomach, yeah. <laughs> Took an Ivy Guard. I'll be back again. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go again. I said, damn, I'm not getting up. Look, because when I look, I don't know if y'all ever got up and went to the bathroom in the movie theater. Literally, you don't see nothing but big ass eyes, and everybody's <laughs> looking at you like, why the fuck is he getting up? I'm walking past a full theater of motherfuckers to the bathroom. <laughs> I said, damn, it's a packed show tonight. I sat back down and said, I can't get up again. <laughs> Did you eat any more of the popcorn? I tried to eat a couple more kernels. And look, the popcorn was what was fucking me up. I ate some popcorn, and my stomach started going crazy again. I said, damn. But look, I'm sitting there like, <laughs> trying to watch the movie. <laughs> Got my gut tight as fuck. It felt like I'm doing <laughs> ad workouts in this joint. This motherfucker was pooping, pooping, pooting in that joint. <laughs> but now, nah, see, I wasn't even doing that. My Somebody fucking just... stink. Somebody fucking stink in here. <laughs> What the fuck is going on? You sitting there agreeing. I know who is that. Y'all don't realize I'm on a date, too. So it's like, low-key, you trying to keep your shit together for your date. You're not trying to be good. If it was just me, I would have been cool. Fuck it. And you want a spooky-ass date. Shit, scary as shit. I went to the movies by myself. I mean, I went to the bathroom by myself. Fuck that. I started to tell Shari, come with me. Let me tell y'all something. Stand outside the door <laughs> and wait. <laughs> Watch over me. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. That movie is based around, basically, um, there's people that are, like, going through shit where they feel like they, you know, being watched, and everybody that they see is smiling. And so they kill themselves, and if they kill themselves in front of somebody else, that person starts to go through the same thing they went through, a.k.a. you start seeing motherfuckers smiling at you for no reason. It'd be people you know, people that died, somebody you just seen. Mm -hmm. But, man... I was telling Terrence, from, from baby age, like, smiling is a sign of, like, comfort and, like, it's, like, a good thing. Yeah. And so, in a movie, they basically take that and turn it into the worst thing that you ever want to see. Like, they was, I remember that the girl asked, and she was like, is it, like, a good smile? And she was like, no, it's, like, the worst smile I've ever, like... The worst smile I've ever seen. When she was explaining 
whoever was smiling to her, the first girl in the movie. But when I tell you after that movie, I was looking at people and I wasn't looking at, like we was walking to the car and I seen somebody walking this way and I'm like, if this motherfucker started smiling, that would scare the fuck out of me for a little second. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When in real life, like somebody smiling shows that they're not a threat. This shit was brilliant. Oh my God, that shit is scary as fuck. And I love... My bad, go ahead. No, 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 you're right. No, I'm just uh, piggybacking on what you said and just to, mm-hmm. just to agree. To take something that is like a happy thing and turn it into the movie's weapon or like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're, you, you subconsciously watch the whole movie looking for smiles and I think it's dope how you don't see people like, hey, how you doing smiling? And like, it's literally like the... You're looking for to see if a mom is a motherfucker about to smile. That's a crazy. That's a dope. It's a uh-huh. dope idea. I thought it was a dope idea. I thought it was dope when I saw the trailer. I'm glad it was dope when we watched it. Yeah, that was a dope uh, recommendation. And I like the fact that these new horror films, at yeah. least the last two I saw, which is Barbarian and then this, the ones that are not in a um like a legacy collection, like the Halloween screens, whatever. Yeah. They're doing a good job with the original ideas for these scary movies. You know I'm saying? Yeah. Like, especially with kind of playing with how you get scared. It's not the classic, I'm opening the fridge, looking in, close it, and here go a motherfucker right here. Yeah. But they set it up like that. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? They, they do the, oh, the cabinet open with the mirror. Close the mirror. You think it's going to be a motherfucker standing behind her. But it's not. Yeah. Because and even that is like starting to become an old. Yeah. Oh, they've been doing that forever. practice. Yeah. I like how they played with that, but didn't really do that. And was like, yo, we really about to scare you this way. But that's my thing. My thing is playing with that is starting to become old. Yeah, some of oh, y'all can yeah. admit, now I know that Shorty not about to be behind the fridge. Because I'm like, it's not that easy. Yeah. They not about to get me. That's how I'm looking at it. So now, low-key, it's like, I think the best thing about that is, is playing with your beliefs. And what you believed happened. Like, remember in Superbad... When Seth went to the grocery store and the dude just cut his throat. <laughs> and it's like, when I, the first time I watched that, I said, holy shit. And then he was just like a vision. You know how somebody sees something uh, and they're like, nah. Or, or on Mean Girls, where she started like, I think she either beat somebody's ass or people started fighting. And then she just, it was just like a vision. Mm-hmm. It was something like that. I think that is a good way to really fool the audience. like To make you think This shit really looked like it really happened, but oh, it was just a, a thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't. Or if you're looking for a movie to go see date night, let us be the ones to give you that confirmation that smile is that one. But bro, you're gonna be scared, low key. Yeah. You going and, and it's not it's not anything to be scared of. It's not like that monster, that monster. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. more so like the the idea is scary. Nah, for real. That joint was that joint. It's scary. Like imagine a movie where everybody started getting like monkey pox or something. It was scary to the point where. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, oh shit. Remember on Game of Thrones, these motherfuckers get touched by them things? And uh-huh. It's like, damn. I definitely don't want that. Yeah, it's like you wouldn't want it. But yeah, that joint, I walked out of the theater and it's like, don't fuck with me. If the person you with just starts smiling, it's like, yeah, I, I don't fuck with me. Right. And I wrote it down. I put pro- productivity can't be gained from things that require you to be productive. I just realized there's a lot of books out there that like talk about productivity. But if you need to work on your productivity, you're not going to make it through the book. Well, you know what I'm saying? Productivity can't be gained by what? From things that require you to be productive. Like, think about it. If I want to read a book on how to stay focused, reading a book on how to stay focused, (laughs) you're not going to be able to stay focused through the book. (laughs) That's what I'm talking about. They gotta <laughs> grip me from chapter one. <laughs> it's like, yo, that's crazy. I started realizing that. It's like, Atomic Habits is a great book. Mm-hmm. But if you have a habit of not finishing books, you're not gonna make it through the book to figure out how to break it. Nah, that's true. Especially when books have <laughs> stuff like prologues. I wrote this book for my grandmother in 1988 because when she raised me, she always said, yeah. I'm already <laughs> off. I you, know, skip you know what I'm saying? I will skip a prologue, epilogue, conclusion, preview, get to the shit chapter one. I try to do the same thing. So this is what I realized. I think instead of trying to work on like being more productive, me for me for me myself, I think it's more about being 
more discipline. Like, I think productivity is like a muscle. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which means you can't just say, oh, you know what? I just read this and that's the fix. You know? Now I'm more productive. I think you deadass have to discipline yourself to strengthening your productivity muscle. Mm-hmm. Which comes from stuff like, if I give an example, if your goal is to read every day, right? I'm trying to read. Let's say you got to study for school. I think instead of like trying to figure out when's the perfect time to study and how can I fit this into my schedule so that it's good for me, I think you should just, it's one, it's something that you don't even really just like want to do. So low key, you kind of have to do it like working out. Think about it. When you first started working out, you had to kind of like force yourself to go like say, you know what? I want to be better at this, so I'm going to just do it in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I think no matter what you're trying to be productive in, I think that's kind of how you got to go about it. Like if Mm -hmm. if you want to learn how to work on your business or you want to get better with your business, my advice, and this is, I know this is random, but I wouldn't wait until, I wouldn't wait to see if you can fit this perfect time in your schedule to, oh, you know what? Now that I got some free time, I'm going to finally use this free time to study how to mm-hmm. start a business. I think you need to say tomorrow, I'm going to wake up early and study. Yeah. And then I think it will start to be more ingrained into you. Because at one point, you force yourself to go to the gym, and then you just started going. Yep. I think anything you want to be consistent, consistency is built around discipline and, like, rhythm. And if you're not disciplined, then... You got to like, like you said, you really have to, for, it, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be going to the gym. It could be, I want to start eating better. Yeah. But you know what? For me, I told myself I wanted to start waking up earlier. And for the last couple of weeks, not every day, but I've been getting up at like 8.30, 9, mm-hmm. 8, you know what I'm saying? And then now when I wake up at like 10, I'm like, Damn, I'm getting up late. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, because, but it was we I mean before that week before then I was getting up at like 11 12 but I literally was tired as fuck and just woke up one day cuz I was like fuck getting up late yeah I'm getting to the gym at 4 4 p.m. that is a terrible time to get to the gym number 1 motherfuckers is getting off work you start in your day basically yeah and so you definitely got to just push and say fuck this I'm doing it yeah like you can't take a, well, anyway, that's just, I don't know. This is just a thought that came to my mind. Hillary Swank is pregnant with twins. That's dope. Million dollar baby. Random as shit, but. Will Smith dropped the Emancipation trailer, which is about um, a real life slave, um, that, a guy named um, Peter Smith. He's famous for the picture of his back being super welted up from being whipped. But, um. Oh wow! He escapes yeah, escapes from slavery, and then based on his wits and whatever he com- he becomes. What does he end up doing? He ends up, I think, taking on like a um, I forget, but he ends up basically it's a triumph story, basically. Yeah, and it's based on a true story, and the internet was in shambles because it's like another one of those, you know, here we go again with another slave movie, t- like things, and. Y'all have heard me and Terrence talk about this hella time, so we're really not going to talk too much about it. But, I mean, I just feel like this isn't really the best the best first response from the slap from Will. It's like, we don't want to see this. We don't. Nobody wants to see it. I don't think people are interested or are super interested in seeing it. It's my man Antoine Fuqua. Legend. He has a great track record. Legend. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And the trailer was actually artistic. Like, yeah. The trailer was actually artistic. I'm not going to say it looked horrible, but it definitely looked like, damn, another one of, of these. My thing is, we'd be foolish to think that they're not going to continue to make these movies. Like, to see Will Smith, this being Will Smith's first movie back, um, I just think it's a funny thing. Like, or it's just, it's just it, to me, it just, the world looks funny through this certain lens that I'm looking at it, where you smack Chris Rock, you know what I'm saying? Because you kind of lost your cool, and now the first movie that's coming out is you're going to be a slave, and I guess you're going to be getting whipped. So it's going low-key feel like you're getting whipped for what you did on that Oscar stage. Because you know how we get connected to our characters that we play. Yeah, but they was working on this. Before. I know. I'm just saying, like, it is funny how shit works. It's just weird how shit works. 
But um, I don't know if I'm really excited to see Will Smith play a slave because we done seen Will Smith, and I think it's possible. for We've seen Will Smith in a lot of roles. So it's like sometimes when you've played a whole bunch of roles, it's just like kind of hard to see you in a certain role. Mm-hmm. I think it's not going to be that easy for me to see Will Smith as a as a slave. Like, is it believable? You know? Yeah. <laughs> what Don't you think this movie might have hit a little bit better had they gotten some other black man to who we didn't really know about, you know what I'm saying, to yeah. play it? No, yeah. Or I maybe agree. one that's a little bit smaller. Like, uh, I don't know. Somebody black. I think, yeah. Well, I agree with you. And I think it's just, it's one of those, like, what people were saying was, we have so many more stories to tell. Like, we got so many more stories to be told <clears throat> from uh, from black folks from hundreds of years ago when we were rich, kings. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to go through the whole whatever. But there's so many stories to tell, and it seems like we always want to tell these stories. Like, The Woman King, which was based on... the, the Which was based on... It wasn't even... They, they changed the whole shit. Of mm-hmm. what that tribe was really about. But even just the idea of that, like, black people are so much more than running around with spears and in string, um, bead, like, waistband. Yeah, like, yeah, cool, it was that time, but, like, is that all we were? Yeah. And that's how people are looking at it. So, to me, I mean, I'm not happy about it. I feel like it is another, that's another movie where they're going to be saying an N-word, calling you boy. I mean, yeah. Slavery. We just got the Tyler Perry joint with the... Jazz man's blues. Jazz man's blues. Woman King. Which a lot, a lot of people like that. Thing. I heard. I heard a lot of people like Jazz man's blues. Well, Dad didn't like it at all. <laughs> so I don't know what it, you know. what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's probably like a cool love story, and some people are okay with that genre. Nah, yeah. What do you? Well, you know what? On the heels of this, we might as well talk about the Black Panther. No, 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 no. Uh, well, Real quick, before we get to you. that. Yeah. One thing that I did want to say about emancipation that I noticed is a lot of the media articles. We're talking about how even though Will Smith isn't invited to the Oscars anymore, emancipation will be sure to try to attend. And I thought, and that stuck out to me because I said, you know what? These are the movies that they look at, that they look at, and they automatically think Oscar. Mm-hmm. I thought it was funny, even though Will Smith wasn't invited to the Oscars, and that gives a lot of reason for why they would mention it, because there's an opportunity for this movie to go to the Oscars without its main star, Will Smith. I think it's still like, damn, y'all thinking Oscar already for the, for a movie like this because these are the roles that we mm-hmm. get Oscars for. And when you look at it the way me and Terrell look at it, it's almost like we will glorify. I mean, I feel it seems like Hollywood will give us the award for playing these roles, almost almost like to inspire the industry to keep making them. You yep. know what I'm saying? If we give the best award or if we nominate this movie – and with this subject matter, then more people will want that nomination. More people will make that. That's that's why I think this has continued to keep don't to keep going the way that it's going. I thought oh, it was just sure. funny to see the Oscar talk already. Yeah, and you best believe that Will Smith signed on to do Emancipation before the Oscars. It was before yeah. the whole shit happened because he's chasing the Oscar. You best believe Will Smith knows if I play a good slave, I might get an Oscar. And that's what he wanted. He didn't know for sure he was going to get it for Serena. I don't think that Will Smith might have. I, I think don't think Will sure Smith's be- best role ever was King Richard. King Richard. I don't think so either. He did a great job. Yeah. But, like, I mean, it is what it is. Ali was his best role ever. It just sucks that you came out with Lonzo, you know, that year, with training day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which was also, but also like- was, was fucked up because they didn't give my man Denzel the award a couple times. Yeah, so it was like one of those we owe you type. Yeah, but we're not going to take away from his performance. From his performance. Yeah, he mm-hmm. killed it. But, I mean, it is what it is. But with that said, how you feel about the Black Panther? We, we didn't get to talk about it, but the Black Panther full trailer came out, and it is exactly what you said it was going to be. Yep. Which is, it's about to be Chadwick Funeral. Chadwick Funeral. Woman Empowerment. Mm-hmm. Sure, he's going to be sad the whole movie. And then guess what? In the end, she's going to say, fuck it, I'm, I'm, I am the Black Panther now, or whatever they say. You know? Mm-hmm. Is she going to have the strength? She like, gonna, is she going to take they that They don't herb? have no more harp-shaped herbs. She's just going to put the suit on. Nah, no way. 
The herb is the only reason you can fall off a mountain <laughs> and live. Let me ask you. I got two questions. Well, I got two points to make. Number one, and this is a question for you. I don't know if you're going to have the answer because I don't. How are they going to kill off the Black Panther? Like, how are they going to explain that he died? What happened? Oh, y'all just going to start with the funeral and we just going to say, damn, since he gone, we don't know. We just never going to speak about how T'Challa died. Because Chadwick passed away. T'Challa was alive in, in Oakland getting ready to open up a community center. So how are we about to explain that he died? Are y'all going to give T'Challa what Chadwick had in real life? Are y'all going to go that far? Or are we just going to start with a funeral? And then, look, you can't say, damn, he got killed off of uh, something because they just threw his, this, his unconscious body over a cold mountain, laid him in ice, brought him back to life. Right. He came back and beat Killmonger. You know what I'm saying? You know what I would like to see? And this is me just thinking off the dome. What's up, me? You mean? This is me thinking off the dome. What if, you know how they show the Black Panther like this? Sheen, mm -hmm. in the trailer. What if T'Challa is just gone and he's presumed dead, right? Mm -hmm. And then when there's this fight between that dude, Namor, or Nay, Nay whatever, mm -hmm. that secret, whatever, Black Panther shows up and, and, and it's like, look, T'Challa? It's T'Challa. Oh, that's T'Challa, right? Uh -huh. And he doing his thing, but he does like fucked up shit. Like he going up against his own people and fucking people up. And they're like, T'Challa's gone mad type shit. And then, Terrence, no, 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 not killing everybody. But I mean, like, it's like, hold on, wait. That's not T'Challa. On some, what's bruh's name from you guys served? Remember he came in, Sonny came in, dapped the other niggas up, and they was like, so that, okay. <laughs> T'Challa come back, and look, he take the mask off. And it's somebody else, and they like that's not T'Challa. And then he says like, "Terrence, that would be dead. hell no, Rotten Tomatoes zero percent." I'm not saying that it would be good, but I'm just trying to give a. I don't know how they' about to do it. That's you know what my, I'm saying? But that's my point. How y'all gonna do it? I thought you was getting ready. I'm to thinking say, if they would have fooled us to think that that was cheap T'Challa, but it ain't. And then he says, "Your king came to me to get this, and I killed him." Okay, I we guess. don't believe you because who are you? Because this nigga that was the Swiss Army knife from the military that had a thousand bodies, couldn't kill him after he got thrown off the mountain. So how did you? Well, you know what? And he just went through the whole shit with the Avengers. But they could give reason to like, they, they could give reason. To, I think I would be, I would like to see and feel like Chadwick is dead. It would be dope to see somebody running around and be like, is that T. Charlie name? Now, this is what I will but, say. Other than that, I mean, it's just going to be... Well, that's the golden... He's, he's gone. That's the golden question. How are they getting ready to kill off T'Challa? Because it has to be convincing. Yeah. Or, but you know what I think they're going to do in my heart of hearts? This is what I think. I think they're going to just start with a funeral, and they're going to say, he loved you. He will want you to do this. And they're never going to explain the how. They're just going to submit the fact that he's gone. Now, this was my other point. Um, I don't... I would really hope that they're showing us all of these, you know, the, all of the strong women figure, but there's still a strong male presence at the end. Or let's say there's a young kid from wherever. The young boy that was playing, that the Black Panther was like, who are you? Yeah. Let's, let's fly him to fucking Wakanda. And he's coming up and he's watching Shuri or whoever. And then he starts to like take on the role and we're going to have another Black Panther that's a dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is what I did. The way I feel is, these, the way I saw a young black boy so happy about the Black Panther and having a superhero that looked like them on some Little Mermaid shit. Nah, yeah. Um, they lit, they, and I told Terrence this. When we were little, we didn't say, look, mom, there go Tobey Maguire. Right. We would be like, yo, that's Iron Man. Like, that's the, he's Peter Parker. These kids didn't know Chadwick. Like, these kids knew him as T'Challa. When they was... At the red carpet, and they screaming because they saw him. They were seeing him as the Black Panther. They're kids. They didn't see him as Chadwick Boseman. So I didn't like the fact that we killed off T'Challa. We yeah. could have very easily put somebody else in the role. because, And then saying, oh, it's too soon to recast, or we can't make somebody else the Black Panther. That would be disrespectful. All right, bet. Well, we've had three Spider-Mans. Right. We had Toby. We had, <coughs> um, what's my man name? Andrew, Andrew Garfield. Garfield. We had... My my boy, the best one that they ever did, Tom Tom Holland. Um, and so like we had three of them. We had like three Hulks. We had 
a couple different Batman. A couple different Batman. A couple different Hell Jokers. Hell up, Batman. Yeah. Three or four Jokers. If we would have just killed... I just feel like the excuse of it's too soon or whatever was bullshit. And I know we love Chadwick in real life, but we're doing the children who love him, who had a role model, yeah. king, a disservice by not recasting. So I'm hoping that in the movie there's some form of that, but it probably won't be. It'll probably just be the Shuri Panther. It's like it's too soon, but it wasn't too soon for y'all to start shooting seven months after Chadwick passed away. But it was too soon to recast. But it wasn't too soon to just make the whole movie again. Yeah. I know y'all got contracts, whatever, but like, I think you make a good point about the young boys that look at that that looked at that and said, yo, my favorite is Black Panther because he looked like me type shit. Yeah. When we was little. Now, we, mm-hmm. I guess girls have Ariel or Ariel, I'm sorry, Little Mermaid, and they get Black Panther. Now, Black Panther's a woman now. What do the little black boys get? What if Ariel, what if, God forbid, what if something happened to Haley Bailey? Hallie. They say Hallie her Bailey. name is Hallie. Somebody, like I'm saying everybody. Yeah. I say oh, <laughs> her character name wrong and her name wrong. <laughs> what if somebody, what if something were to happen to her? You know what I'm saying? After that, you, after all of this that they've done, all the magic that's being built up with this, and in the next one they make Little Mermaid a guy, Little Mer, Little Mer, Little Mer boy, a Little Merman. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It'd be like, all right, look, maybe we should just not do this. Let's just recast. Let's just put her. another girl in there. <laughs> Let's and just people recast say it her. was too soon. The 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 wound from is too fresh. So nah. make it a man. I've seen people say stuff like. Recasting would be disrespectful to black folks. How? And I said, I don't get black that. folks saying that. And I said, I don't get why they feel that way. Because are you not thinking about the children? Are you just thinking about how you were a fan of Chadwick? Yeah, it's not making it, this the role he played the role, but it, it wasn't him. It was yeah. a role he played. You know what I'm saying? Like he played Jack Chadwick was a magician at playing people that he was not. Right. James Brown, he killed it. Jackie Robinson, he killed it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, killed it. Mm-hmm. And look, this is my thing, too. His family has came out and said that he would want somebody want it to be recast. But they just said, fuck the fam? Yeah. I think his I mean, family would not. Do you think that his family and people that knew him want to sit and watch a whole nother, like, basically memorial of the world? You know what I'm saying? Crying over him? Yeah. I don't like the whole woman no cry shit. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like that it. whole thing because it's like, it's like another, like you said, it's like another funeral. But R.P. Chadwick, the, the trailer was I. Right. You know what it'll be fire? What? When Chadwick's dad, I'm, I'm sorry, Chadwick. When Black Panther's father died in the movie, he went to that place, that purple place, and seen his father. What if they don't, they can't show Chadwick, but remember his they father. Can also, they can show him on some Paul Walker, we just superimpose his face onto this type. They could, but what if? Remember, his father was in the tree as an actual Black Panther. There's a there's a way you could use that and say, "Oh, that's T'Challa." I would uh, be crying like shit <laughs> in that job. <laughs> Look, you know why we crying? That's Chadwick. We <laughs> fucked up mentally. We can't even distinguish Chadwick from T'Challa. That's the problem with this whole thing. That's why we can't cast it. Cause look, I told you about this all the time. Black people, when you play a role, you're that role. Uh huh. You are who you play. If you rob niggas, when you show up, then white people gonna be like, "Watch that motherfucker." <laughs> if you rob niggas in the movie, they gonna say, "Watch you." If look, we saw it. I told Terrell, we I bring it up again. Mm-hmm. We watched Lupita get the Oscar for basically getting whipped because they looked at her like she was Patsy. Like they she thought really that was she was really a slave. She got mad magazine deals. They saying her skin is so beautiful. She's beautiful. It was bullshit. Y'all are just fucking glamorized over the fucking uh, performance. Like we, it's, I told you it's a blessing and a curse. Because they see the roles we play and they attach that to who we really are. Uh-huh. That's a danger in TV and media. And that's why... When they tell you to play gangster number one, t- people turn that down. Like Michael B. Jordan. 100%. You know what I'm saying? That's, mm-hmm. why that it's this, that's why TV and media is dangerous and has been for years. Yeah. Like Terrence made, had a, he, he was, it's funny as shit because he was talking about if you've seen Minister Society and Set It Off um, and Players Club, mm-hmm. the dude that plays Junior, the dude that shot, that spent the block on Kane, mm-hmm. and the dude that got uh, Jada Pinkett um, 
little brother killed and set it off. And he was also raped Ebony in Players Club. People don't trust that nigga in real they life. They do not trust him for real. <laughs> Fuck that nigga. If you could play a role uh, yeah. like that, you were <laughs> sick. That's how people think. People think Bo Keem Woodbine is really a creep ass fucked up nigga. And you know what's <laughs> fucked up about all of this? Ours, and this is why we don't win awards. Mm -hmm. This is why we don't win awards because our shit, well, and I'm saying that on the heels of me saying that's why Lupita won her award. But mm -hmm. I'm saying that to say our shit looks like performance art. Our shit doesn't really look like art. It looks like we oh, really went just, out there and did You're just it. living your life and just on camera right here. That's what I'm saying. They don't look at our shit like we put the work in to act. We put the work in to do this. Like, I could not be a gangster at all, but be able to play that role well. And people think that's easy for him because yeah. that's just who he is. Like, why hasn't Frank from Snowfall, he's a British dude. Why has Frank never been nominated for a best lead role for an Emmy? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Low key, his performance deserves recognition. He's doing something that's completely out of his wheelhouse. And I would say maybe I do sometimes have issues with the, you know what I'm saying, with that side. But one thing that I will say is Frank definitely deserves some Emmy nods for some of them seasons. Nah, especially sure. the, you know what I'm saying, the mm. drive motherfucker scene. That was enough for you to get an Emmy nod. Not versus yet. some of these other dudes, they can put you in there. But they look at him like, oh, he ain't doing nothing special. He just acting like how they always act or how they all act. That's just who they are. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know what? On the heels of the controversy, you want to talk Kanye? So we can just get out the way. I'm not trying to get shit out the way, Terrell. I'm just trying to talk. No, nah, I'm just, you know, we've been heavy in up, so I said might as well get the heavy topics in. Oh, okay, yeah. But I think we, we kind of lighthearted. Me and Terrell were saying that we were just feeling kind of heavy the last couple of pods, just kind of mm -hmm. serious talk. And then you got to believe in yourself. <laughs> you can't. Because if you don't believe in yourself, then how are you going to achieve a goal? <laughs> 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 believe in yourself. But uh, you hate people like that because it's such a basic ass. I got this from a, somebody else inspired me, so I got you know what I'm saying. Uh huh. But Kanye West was spotted at a fashion show, I believe his Yeezy season nine fashion mm -hmm. show. Um, irony, and he was wearing a White Lives Matter t shirt, standing next to Candace Owens, who is literally one of the most despicable Negroes. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most <laughs> despicable Negroes <laughs> of 2022. And um, 2000s period. period. But um, it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, including myself. And me, yep. Um, and I felt like if I could explain why it rubbed me the wrong way is because my first thought is I don't remember Kanye West ever supporting Black Lives Matter. I don't ever remember Kanye West protesting when the Black Lives Matter protest was going. I don't remember you posting about George Floyd. You didn't have an Instagram back then, so it's cool. I don't remember him posting anything, really. I don't Yeah, this, I don't remember this big affiliation. He might have said something in a song about Trayvon, but like Kanye West has always struck me as a as somebody who takes advantage of the fact that he's black. And a lot of black people do this. Like, oh, I'm black, so I can say that this is bullshit. Hold up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, I've never seen Kanye West in support of Black Lives Matter. So when we don't see you support the first part of the movement, when you go and make a move like this, it just looks away. You know what I mean? Yeah. And nobody disagrees that, like, and I feel the same way. We haven't seen Kanye really take that stance since. The uh like a like a strong political stance like that even back when the the George Bush thing was kind of like, but then like recently it was more so fashion. It was they're keeping me out of fashion because they want to call me a nigga by calling me a rapper. It was cool like, you was right about that, but it did. We all know it's that like black because we, you're not getting what you want. Now you're gonna play right. right the race card. Nah, you know nah, what I'm yeah. saying. And he had some merit. He definitely was. He nah, definitely had some merit. And with that's that. the thing, like. But, like, it's like, okay, so we with you. So mm -hmm. we see the type of, we trying to get a gauge on the type of person you are. What I don't like is for you to say Black Lives Matter was some bullshit. Now, the Me organization neither. and those people that stole that money, that was some bullshit. He said it was a scam. It was, a, was a scam. Yeah, yeah, like, that was a scam because they stole money from people that really believed in what it was all about. Black Lives Matter was literally about the fact that 
black people were being disproportionately abused and killed by police. And it was our way of saying, hey, look, black lives matter in this country type shit. So right. black lives matter, too. Right. Like, like, hey, yeah. black lives matter. So we need to make start acting like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the white power structure created blue lives matter and white lives matter and all lives matter and all lives matter. Not because they wanted to say this, these people matter, but because they were going directly against what black lives matter stood for. Like they completely ignored the point of it and just turned it into what they wanted to turn into and say, Oh, well, and it's like, all right, well, and this is my thing. Somebody um, hit me on Twitter and said, you have a bunch of white listeners that are listening to your podcast. Their lives don't matter. And because I didn't like the the White Lives Matter joint. Yeah. And um, my response to that is, show me where white lives don't matter in the U.S. Show me where. Because I can show you lists of privilege. But the reason why Black Lives Matter is what it is, is because of a history of showing us that they don't. So that's where... I don't get it, Kanye. Because this is the thing. This is what I'll say for Kanye. The uh, the MAGA hat thing yeah. was he said, I'm trying to rewrite whatever. I'm trying to, when I threw on the MAGA hat, they whatever. And it's like, okay, I guess he was trying to do that to go against the grain and say, almost like, all right, they they called you the N-word and then we took that, whatever. Type yeah. shit. You trying to like do some shit like that. Yeah. I don't know what this is going to be. And I said on Twitter, I really don't even have the energy to care, Kanye. It's just annoying at this point. That's why I, that, the word I used was annoying. It's like, here you go, and you out there with fucking Candace Owens. Like, My thing is, like, I don't think you give a fuck for real. I think you're trying to act like you give a fuck and act like you're making a political statement, but you really don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. You put the MAGA hat on when we was in the thick of Black Lives Matter. Because you are once again trying to say, I'm different, look at me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He tries to act like he's doing this for the people when really it just be looking like you're doing this shit for yourself to make yourself look different. Like It's like, and just for more context on the Black Lives Matter, White Lives Matter thing, people don't understand that Like when we said Black Lives Matter, I feel like it was very clear what we, would, what we meant by that. People were saying, all lives matter. Because instead of it's almost they didn't like to hear you even say they don't like the words and the way that they list it. You know what I'm saying? You ever Mm -hmm. argue with somebody who's all who keeps saying matter of fact shit, like or a matter of fact? It's like arguing with a person who's matter of fact. Somebody can say um, you're irritating, right? And you said you and when look when y'all arguing, you could be like you said that I was annoying and you said I was getting on your nerves. And they'll say, I never said that. Did I say you were, uh, you were getting on my nerves? And it's like, yo, okay, I get you said irritating. Okay, but I didn't say getting on your nerves. It's like, you ever argue with somebody like that? Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, are we talking about like, what actually, like, like, are we talking about statements or are we talking about words? You know what I mean? And I feel like the matter, the Black Lives Matter statement got lost behind the words because people, instead of hearing what we was trying to say, they just looked at the words and interpreted that Black Lives Matter. Oh, what about all lives? What about all lives? It's like, okay, see, y'all don't really understand the message. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's almost like we should we, we, we should have put that T-O-O on the end, and I don't think none of this would even happen. If we would have put Black Lives Matter too, I think we would not even have this. But it is what it is. I don't like Kanye West saying that Black Lives Matter was a scam and then he's like, you're welcome. What did you do? You put White Lives Matter on a shirt, on a t-shirt that you're probably going to charge $200 probably, for. And my thing is like, what are you doing? Like, low-key, I'm, I need an explanation. Otherwise, I'm off it. You know what I'm saying? Like, not really fucking with it, bro. Because you really haven't given me no reason to believe you really give a fuck about black people, for real. Because what? Because of what you did back then? We done seen a lot of black people who did shit for black people back then and then flint. You know what I'm saying? And you didn't do shit. You got on the news and said what you said, and that was bold, and I, and that was dope. You know what I'm saying? You stood up for Beyonce. Cool. Wasn't really a activism thing. But, but, yeah. Like, I listen to Gorgeous now, and I'm like, 
it's hip. It, it, it's it don't like sound it don't same. sound like this is the nigga that would be who you are today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just seems like it just. I, I I told most people it seems selfish. It just feels like, and it, oh, this is what I wanted to say. People were saying, oh, it's marketing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This is just marketing. Like he's a genius because this is marketing. Um, I don't think that it's. I mean, who is he marketing to? If it's marketing, who are you marketing to? This is my question. I think um, this is my question that I have for you behind that. Because I feel like Kanye can do, or he's kind of one of those celebs now. Yeah. And I think this is kind of dangerous. But he can do whatever he wants to do. And if he puts out an album, people will support. Yep. And none of this will matter at all because people will say, bet. Like he had posted something, and one of the top comments on his Instagram post was, "Man, we need a diss record." It's like y'all are so fucking thirsty for music. Yeah, it's sickening that you'll just put all of this shit aside, and ugh, people will beg for music, it begging was, for an album. And that's why I feel like he could was, say what he's saying. He could do all of this, but if he say, "I'm dropping Donda, whatever," everybody gonna go and listen to it. Nah, yeah, it it, it was niggas in my mentions telling me like. Man, I'm a fan of the music, so well, the, I don't give a fuck. Well, what do you have to say about people? Act, people was wondering how you was going to respond because you, once upon a time, had that same take of the I'm a fan of the music. When, and when well, he did the MAGA shit, that was you. But this was my thing with the MAGA shit. I understood that Kanye was rich and that he could have a different political opinion than, you know what I'm saying, than me. He could want Trump in office because Trump is going to raise taxes for the not rich and he's rich. And like he said, he was trying to flip shit and whatever. It was like one of those things where I'm like, you know what? It doesn't really affect me like that. You know what I'm saying? Kanye West always kind of plays as a distraction in a way. Mm -hmm. And like, I've never really been deep political. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to fuck with bro for the music. I'm not even going to pay attention to politics. I shouldn't even know this. This is definitely not the same as that. I don't think this White Lives Matter shirt is the same as him putting on the MAGA hat. Because yeah. that was that was politics as to where this is political, but this is also like, this goes against. Yeah. Like, it's almost like when we, when we used to say Black Lives Matter back then, and it's like a, when people would say All Lives Matter. It's like, okay... This is me. This is us being misunderstood because mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot of people that understood the Black Lives Matter movement. And the reason why there's it's, still people to this day that don't that, get it, that don't get why all lives matter goes against. Yeah, goes against that. People don't get it. And I was saying that I just feel like I've never seen Kanye even really give a fuck about Black Lives Matter. So. I mean, i would say this. It's almost like, you know how they say. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, can't put the blame on you. J. Cole. Even though he's plenty of people said it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just, but. I use J. <laughs> I use Cole. But it's just like, that's how I feel now. Like, you got me with the MAGA hat shit because of what you've done and said in your career before. So we just chose to say, okay, we just, we're just, we made the excuses for you. I'm going to keep it on it. And this is our third time, really, because we had the slavery as a choice thing. And that's that thing. The slavery is a choice thing. I felt like I understood what he was saying. Even still to this day, I understood what he was saying with that. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, we've gotten to a point now where it's like, okay, now you just come off like, we just kind of tired of you. Like, one thing I was watching Mark Lamont Hill talk about it. Mark Lamont Hill was talking about how Love Kanye, Mark Lamont Hill. Love him. Mm-hmm. He was talking about how uh, Kanye West has mental health issues. And they were talking about how he doesn't really be taking his medicine like that. So we don't necessarily understand. But like, he was talking about how he's not really in a space where he could do this because we kind of are confused as to like who he is, what he wants. Like yeah. not long ago, you was just on social media claiming that, you know what I'm saying, you being taken advantage of with your kids and that situation with that because you're a black man, you know what I'm saying? And you're this black dude. And without explanation, it's hard for us to understand a White Lives Matter shirt and your goal with it. Like... I don't understand it. I really wish he would come out and say, I wore the shirt for this. Don't come out and say, 
Black Lives Matter was a scam. You're welcome. Uh, we all know that Black Lives Matter being turned into a business. Yeah, that was a scam. But we all understand the movement. And that was too. fucked up. And but think it, about this. What would they tell you? What does that side say? You know what I'm saying? That side, all when you bring up Black Lives Matter, that side will say, oh, you mean the scam company that stole millions of dollars from black people? And you like, damn, I'm not even talking about the GoFundMe the, the, or the, the business. I'm talking about the movement. The movement itself, which was a movement before it was monetized. Yeah, and like then, but that's the bad thing. And that made me think, like, okay. Did he oh so does he explain it right there? Here's my response when people ask. Here's my resp- here's my latest response when people ask me. This was six hours ago. Here's my latest response when people ask me why I made a T that says white lives matter. They do. I mean, white lives do matter. I nobody mean, ever said they didn't know. Nobody and that's said my thing. they Yeah, like there's never been a point where does they he not didn't. sound like them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You you sound like you don't understand why we said black lives matter. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Yo, you got it, bro. But I'm not going I'm not sweet. I don't give a fuck if you made my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. I don't give a fuck if you made some of my favorite music. I'm not rocking with that, bro. I don't give a fuck. I'm not. The, you niggas who are like, yo, I mean, I don't give a fuck about this. If he makes music, cool, I'm still going to listen to it. Cool, bro. But like, so if he put out an album tomorrow, you going to listen to it? Nah. Nah. I'm good. Because at what point do we stop making excuses for people doing dumb shit? You know what I'm saying? Who gives a fuck what you did before? Like, we should, ho- we should be able to hold people accountable. Like, it's like, he's at this level where he's like Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A blatantly does not not give a fuck about black people, but we still be eating it because we hooked on them nugs and strips. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They have blatant, like, Chick-fil-A messages. let you know on that bag, close on Sunday. Like, they was very slick. They said, well, your community, what, look, when we do that, your community will be the first to know. Like, we always like, wow, oh, wow. <laughs> Low key, we should be outraged. <laughs> But look, Chick Fil A, we, we don't have no type of unity. We're fiends for art and fun shit. We don't take anything serious. So we gonna get up there and say, okay, Kanye, you know he thinking different. He thinking different. Like his goal is to, yo. Well, T, let me say this because I, what I think is gonna happen, yeah, is people right now don't want to listen to anything from Kanye. Like we feel this way now, but. He's going to come out and explain some shit or whatever. Because if that's the case, then why do we listen to Donda? Why did everybody flock to Donda, including us? We flocked to Donda after he did all of that shit because he came out and explained. He's going to come out and try to explain some shit or say he was in a low space. What did he do before that was like this? He said that he did the, he misspoke when the slavery was a choice thing. And he did the MAGA shit. You know what I'm saying? Where people should have felt like, you know what? You're not who you used to be. We off you. But then he came out and people did feel that way. Then he came out and explained how he was in a dark place mentally, but then he really did this to go against the grain, and then he put a documentary, whatever, or, you know, he was teasing this album, talking about his mom, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he won everybody back. Motherfucker did 500,000 first week. But so I felt- what's to stop him from doing the exact same thing now, coming out and explaining some shit? He's clearly having a midlife crisis with the big face and beard. Like, yeah. I just feel like I'm not a sucker for the music. There are going to be people that's probably going to flock to it because, like like I said, Chick-fil-A is at a point now where people love your product so much to the point where when you say fuck y'all, they have to now detach from that. Mm -hmm. And when you say free chicken sandwich Sunday, now y'all running up there. Because you don't even remember that. Like, that's literally what happens to us. Yep. That's our community in a nutshell. You know what I'm saying? Kanye West is no different. Like, people love his music. So when he comes out and says some bullshit, if he give a little bit of a y'all, I was just bullshitting, people are going to run back to it. My thing is this. If, we, if he don't come out with a better explanation than this, then like, I'm good, bro. I'm good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not... I don't think that Kanye West is making music like he used to anyway. I think Donda was probably one of... I don't even think he wants to make music. For real. Yeah, that was the last... I thought Donda was great, but like low-key, it felt like a final feat. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is it. Like, 
I don't see Donda. Let's keep it hundred. Donda was great, but he doesn't seem like he's in a space where he's about to be making music. You got all this shit going on with your daughters, fashion, all your kids. You got this fashion shit going on. I'm just not really. It's 2022, bro. Like Kanye West is low key a goat. You're like Jay Z, but nobody's checking for a Jay Z album anymore. If he dropped, what we listen Terrence, to, Terrence, that is not true. Think about it. Nobody Jay Z drops an album. It's a lot of people checking for but it. But I'm not saying. And no, if Kanye drops an album, it's a lot of people. Checking I'm not for saying it. that. What I'm just saying is we're not sitting here starving for it. We got new new artists, new music, and if you drop, we'd be grateful. But okay, yeah, it's like. I don't. I'm not sitting here like losing sleep because he hasn't made music in a while. I just wish he would make a make a song. I wish he would. Nah, I'm not doing that. Like, if you make a song, bet. But when you do stuff like this, I'm cool, bro, because I don't really know what side you on. Oh, you right. You standing there with you got it. Candace Wood with Candace Owens. We know about her. Mm -hmm. So how do you explain that? Like, no, you just starting you. to like this was left field for me. For yeah. real. And a lot of people aren't surprised, though. A lot of people feel like this is who he is and how he has been. Yeah. And it's a lot of people that, and including us, who f who fell for the, yeah, fool the, me one time, cool. Like, I'm at that three times peace sign. <laughs> I'm at that. This is the three times. I don't count the slavery for 400 years. That sounds like a choice to me. I understood what he said when he said it. I just I know people was... heard the words and said, oh, he said slavery was a choice. So you think people in change chose? All right, nah. He's saying, like, he's talking about, like, mindset. Like, I understood that, like, having a slave mind. Mm -hmm. I just don't see how this is that. I don't see how he comes out and says, yeah, I wore the... Like, him coming out saying, people ask me why I wore the White Lives Matter shirt because they do. It's like... No, I get it. We get it. I don't want to believe this. Like, we get, get it. it. I, I'm well, sorry, we, I'm we, sorry. Under, we, we understand it. it, but I just don't get it. And I'm not a sucker. I'm not a bitch. I'm not just going to say, oh, because I fuck with his music, I'm just going to excuse it. I'm not. But, I'm like, not, are you going to get to a point one day where you're back listening again is what I'm saying. No. I'm not going to say that because I don't know if he might be sick in but the But that's my thing. Shit. If we find that out, you can't really ask me now when we don't know why he said it and say, oh, but are you going to listen to his music later? I mean, but I'm not if about he to... never explains this, No. I'm good. He, but that's what I'm saying. If he comes out and explains it, are you going to listen again? You it depends on what the explanation is. Well, I can't. If he said, if he has an explanation for this and it made sense, like I told you, I thought he was saying, I thought he was going to say, I wore the White Lives Matter shirt because when people see a Black Lives Matter shirt, they say, what about all lives? And I thought he was going to say, when I wear a White Lives Matter shirt, they should be saying the same thing. When white people see a White Lives Matter shirt, Y'all should be saying the same thing. All lives matter. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought the the play was gonna be. I didn't know. I, I, and that's what that's that's why I said even though I don't like that, I'm like okay, that would make a little bit of sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Yeah, y'all boys on some y'all boys on some mess again. I think I'm just at a point now where I'm just kind of like done giving it attention. After this, yeah. It's like, I, I think in my tweet, I was talking about how you just get to a point now where shit be happening and it's like, like I had mentioned the, uh, the school shootings and shit. And I'm not trying to sad us out. All I'm going to say is that shit be happening and then nothing changes and we just all move on. And you would think like some crazy shit happened. Yo, this can never happen again. So think about it. You don't have some shit happen at work. I, I work re even in re going back to my retail days. When this girl fell off that ladder and bust her head, yeah. immediately we had to take all of these ladders away. Immediately, shit changed. So on a grand scale, shit, some like that happens. Twenty kids get killed. Nothing changes. Everybody just goes on about their life. Christmas coming up. You know what I'm saying? Right. We just go back to watching TV, award show. That was sad. But the remember <laughs> the BET Awards put the. Uh, what was that? Te what 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 city was that? With the with the grocery store, they put it in the me in memoriam like this shit happened. Fuck it, we moving on. We just be moving on from shit so fast now. It seems like everything we used to move on from motherfuckers dying, like that was old fast. Like damn, this person got old and died. Damn, that's sad. Now, when some cra when when crazy shit happened, we just I'm gonna end it with this. I wanted to read this. This dude asks, at Van Lathan, 
mm-hmm. who already had that. He had that mix up with Kanye at TMZ where he yeah. stood up. He put, do white lives not matter? Van Lathan's response was, we don't need a reminder of the worth of white lives. America is a shrine to the worth of white people. This message is reactionary to a message affirming the worth of black lives, which have never been worth anything in America. In its intent, it's a white supremacist notion because it, pos- it, because it posits that we can't have a conversation about the worth of black people without having a conversation about the worth of white people, which is fucking insane. The notion that it always has to be about white people in America is incredibly frustrating, emotionally draining, and the whole problem. But here's Kanye apparently centering that notion. Mm-hmm. So in that explanation, it just said it. I mean, I just wanted to kind of remind people that like nobody is saying that white lives don't matter. Right. It's easy to respond to people who are upset with this and say, oh, so y'all think white lives don't matter. Nah, it's not that. It's just about the fact that the only reason why people the only reason why he's able to put that on a shirt or why he's even saying that is to counter the one before the notion that was made before. So just so, just so we put that out there so nobody thinks that me and Terrell think that white lives don't matter. Right. Because this is definitely not that. And right. like, that's definitely not, you know what I'm saying, who I am at all. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah, we said he wasn't going to get dark with it, but I mean, that was kind of dark. That's why I said I wanted to get out the way first. You saying get out the way first, like we need an hour some change in. We should have talked about that first first. I wanted to get that. Well, I didn't we know we were going to talk about that long. now. <laughs> well, you know what? Let's just, we'll, we'll change it up. We'll switch the pace. I got something if, if you don't. Okay. I wanted to say, fellas, this is for the fellas. It's spooky season. And I know you've seen some cringy shit on, on TikTok and Twitter. Do it for your girl. She will enjoy it. Now, yeah. This is the season for you to start. Don't wait. Take it from me. I was talking to my man. I'm not going to put him out there. But we was all talking in a circle about how, um, you know, we, whatever, whatever. He was like, I ain't take my girl out in a minute. Yeah, because I've been working. And yeah, I've been, yeah. Wasn't that before? You said this before already. I think I had, but I'm just, just oh, circling just back. back. Okay, yeah. This is the time where you listen to this shit and actually take it and use it. But okay, yeah. it just got, look, it just got to October. Don't wait until Halloween. Set up like a like a weekend stay in movie type joint. Buy her favorite snacks or your favorite snacks. Well, can y'all get some drinks, take some shots, get some Halloween PJs or something like that. Terrell so seen that TikTok. Stay in, but you know what? I was I said I, I said I know you've seen some cringy TikToks out there, but do it. Fuck out of here. Why I you say that? that? To try and step on my shit. Do it. Would you have? Would you be doing it if you didn't see the TikTok, nigga? So, Terry, I'm a nigga. When I find would out you have, some shit, I'm gonna tell everybody else about it. And I didn't say, yo, I thought about this in my mind last night. I didn't say that. Your black ass is annoying. Nah, but you also I didn't said, say I saw a TikTok that made me wanna. It, it's on. It's on. Look, check the receipt. Check the. Check the. What are you? What is it? I forget. What I know what you're trying check to say. The, I forget what he said, but. I started this by saying, I know y'all seen some cringy TikToks. Do it, bro. Nah, Your girl will love that shit. Do it. Now, yeah, the corny shit, low-key, you do have to do. But look, this is like that pumpkin patch. Take your girl to the amusement park, to the scary haunted houses, and do yeah. all of that. Set up all of that. Yeah. But it's kind of early now. See, we ain't really got the pumpkins even. The pumpkins is coming in. The patches ain't even really up nah, and running. Nah, patches yet. is definitely up and running. Definitely take your girl to a pumpkin patch now. The pumpkin patch is open already? Yes. It's been open. It's some of them been open since in middle September. This is why you need to go now because it's chill. If you want to go to uh, Kings Dominion, Six Flags, a haunted house, anything like that, you do not need to be trying to go. I'm gonna just the t- 28th through the 31st. You about to be going with a million niggas. You I'm gonna get ready corona? to say, yeah, nah, not even that. Do you want to get robbed or have your car window bashed in? <laughs> yeah, you need to go now while it's out the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Halloween is on a Monday night. And the 30th is going to be wild, too, because that's a Sunday. But I would not recommend going to Six Flags at all. I'm sorry, Six Flags CEO. I know you're trying to get Target Fright customers. Fright Fest. Fright Fest. Do <laughs> not go there, y'all. Don't do it. It's going to be so ghetto. Let some the people kid... live in some dope areas with Six Flags. You can't just put that let on the, all Six Flags. But let the kids go. Even the Six Flags New Jersey, they say be ghetto as Sorry, fuck. Okay, that's Six Flags New Jersey. But, like. Just because you live by the most bum ass Six Flags, you giving everybody advice. Yeah, all I'm saying is that there's other shit that you can do outside of just going to the Six Flags joint. Now, if you live by That's Bush true. Gardens or a fucking see, nah, see, I don't Carowinds like that you try or, shit on Six uh, Flags. Uh, Terrence, 
the Six Flags CEO came out and said that his his customers is fucked up. All I'm saying is that I'm thinking about like the actual experience, bro. It's gonna be a bunch of sh- shit in there. Cause there be a bunch of kids, bro. But like, it just sound like even for the people that's like 20, 22, you are gonna be in there with everybody, kids, their parents dropped off, badass fourteen year olds. But look, you might be listening. It's gonna be eighteen year olds that might listen to this. Seventeen. But that's what I'm they saying. They might be the ones going. You a old ass nigga. They don't well, even have a car. Some of these people to even do so. Well, you know what? Go ahead and go and just tell me about how your experience was. I have I'm not in the last that it, five that years. That's what you should do. I'm just saying we not about to shit on just because you live by the Landover joint. That's crazy. Terrence, I'm not saying that. The it's some dope Six Flags. The Six Flags in Texas is dope. You Fiesta. should go. All I'm gonna say is that Six Flags doesn't El have the Six Flags don't have the best reputation for the experience. When the last time in the last ten years have your black ass had anybody talk to you and say, man, we went to Six Flags for Fright Fest and it was fun. For real, I live in this bum-ass area by the worst Six Flags ever. Of course. Chance, you know, I don't know if you know, but I be doing this park shit. You don't. So why is so he I be knowing me? about the Six Flags? I'm not just talking you about Landover. You know what? All right, bet. I'll let y'all let him shit on Six Flags. Now we never going to get a Six Flags deal. <laughs> what if they want, want us to come perform on a He's what's-her-name day? He's only doing the job of money. Look, what if they want to perform on a, on a what's the name? You know how you have people come perform on that stage? You know what I'm going to tell them? Your CEO agrees. This motherfucker said the same thing. I'm just not trying to shit on the entire Six Flags establishment Terrence, because we I live by the worst one. I don't Six Flags as an establishment. You don't. All I'm going to say, I, I'm just talking about the experience, bro. I give a fuck about these but motherfuckers But you talking experience. about your experience from your joint. But they could go to Six Flags and they could be dope. You don't get that? Go ahead and go to Six Flags and let us know how it was, y'all. Let us know when you get back to your car and your window is shattered. Because some 14-year-olds with poo shiesty masks going running around, but bash your window in. I just think it's crazy. Like, if you live, it's just not worth it What if you me. live by a real good subway, but you live by a subway where it's only hood niggas and ghetto-ass motherfuckers that work there? So you like, fuck subway. If you want a ghetto-ass sandwich, then it's like, hold up. Some people got some good joints they live by. But you know what? I'll give it to you. The one in the DMV is actually trash. The, son, the, the, the Six Flags CEO came out and said that he doesn't like... He wasn't just talking about Landover, Terrence. I know. He was talking about all his parks. My bad, y'all. My bad. He was talking about all his parks. Yeah, all, but... All of them. And look, I'm not, I don't want to harp on that too long. I'm just saying there's other stuff that you can do. He wasn't kids. saying that it's ghetto everywhere. He no. was just saying that he want up the price because it's a lot of kids. He wasn't saying ghetto. Terrence, like, no. He wasn't on some Chick-fil-A shit. Terrence, he 100% said out of his mouth, I want the Target customer, and it feels like what I have now is the Walmart Kmart customer. Yes, but you- What so, does that mean, Terrence? So why? So look, so you put that as black people. That's no, what we talked about I the last time. I never said anything about color. No, nah, but see, you trying All to talk saying, about no, ghetto, it's gonna be a bunch tacky, and not black people, but like so poverty people. You trying what to say. did the man mean then? He mean he want more customers that's on the upper echelon. He want more customers what that's do on they grade look A. Like? What do they act like? They don't act like the people that's in there now. And nobody say anything about black folks. Your black ass is just trying to cap you know for, what? for Six Pardon. Flags. I just think it's crazy you just sunning all Six Flags like that. But you know what? You know what? I'll let you have it. It's because, well, you know what? Maybe you're right. Now you got y'all, it. Look, y'all say what y'all Tell think. keep his energy. Say what y'all think. All I'm saying is. When fella, you show up at the park, nah, take his bitch ass out back. You not getting people no probably El think, Toro. People probably think you annoying as shit because you stepping on my shit. I'm not really stepping on I'm just saying, I mean, what if they wanted to go? Because this is what I'm saying. All I was telling the fellas is that traditionally for the last 10 years, going to Six Flags on Halloween, people are not having the best of time. That's all I'm going to say because it's just too many kids. And I'm not even talking to the people that's 18, 19. It's going to be 13, 14, 10. Do you remember when we went to... uh? When you had your uh your little girlfriend back in high school, what grade was we in? We was in that's 2011. Right, you was 13. No, you was that's 11 or 17. You was 16. Okay. You want to be in there with a bunch of 16 year olds? See, you know what? Back then, I wished I was older though. Back then, I had to ask for a ride. I had twenty dollars so I can maybe get a funnel cake. But if I do, this, this motherfucker wants some. <laughs> I can't even buy her one. I can't get a drink with my shit because the shit was fourteen dollars. <laughs> it's like, yo, I'm older now. Well, we was on them courtesy cups. Mom used to drop us off at Six Flags with no money at all and just say, "Get cur- get courtesy water." 
Let's stay on the hot, hot nah, no bullshit. Get a courtesy but cap. Let's stay on the Halloween topics. Do a Halloween season tip with the with your mm-hmm. Hey look, sneaky link for real. Oh, okay. You know what I'm I saying? I like that. I like that theme. Yeah. I Ro- like that. Look, role play. Would you role play with your girl? I never really been a a big Oh no, that was a sick role play idea I just had. What? I don't want to hear it. I never really. Nah, you want me to say it? Nah. You and your girl role play? She knock at your door. Trick or treat. It's a girl. It's your girl. So like, what the hell? And you could be like, you know what I'm saying? So okay, so you want some? Oh, I'm out of candy, but I might have some in the back. (laughs) (laughs) If you think it's sick, then that's you. Look, your girl say, "Mm, look. Terrence. That will be fire. So you know what? Some of y'all are lame. When you get <laughs> your place. Me immediately saying y'all lame. <laughs> y'all lame and shit. <laughs> you sound like the nigga on uh. Terrell, come on though. That will be your fire. I mean, yeah, but I'm not really. The a girl boy. show up with a sexy ass outfit on. I mean, I'm not she's not going to show up, but I mean, so y'all you going to put her there? outside there. So when the trash man come in at 8 o'clock. <laughs> she just got to step out there. She just step out there. Y'all can do what y'all want to do. Everybody has that. We're not going to do it. Look, we're not going to kink shame. That's what they say. You know, we're not going to kink shame. Some <laughs> people are like that. Y'all got it. But I ain't doing that bullshit. But definitely having like a, a spooky night with your girl. I think mm-hmm. that's dope. It's some scary sipping paints y'all can do. A sipping it's, paint uh, with, you, with, the, uh, with the jack-o'-lanterns and shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Halloween flavors. Hey, look, y'all just go out on a late night. Yeah. Y'all don't got to go nowhere crazy. Y'all could just, I mean, you know what I'm saying, costumes. Yeah, do s'mores. S'mores are universal. It's cold outside or getting cold type of, you know, joint. Get a motherfucking puzzle or some Legos for the spooky night. Y'all might can watch a scary. Because don't just set up to you. I just got your snacks and we just going to watch Hocus Pocus too. Because what y'all going to do when Hocus Pocus 2 go off? Nah, and I know they have little events out there that's like geared for this season. So. Little shit. Don't just plan to fuck, y'all. That's what I'm going to say. Don't just plan to get the candy and then her come over and watch the movie. Y'all never going to watch the movie. just going to fuck. Actually, like, have, like, a effort. Fuck that. <laughs> look, that ass looking fat in these PJs. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas can't keep their shit together. <laughs> Shaking mine off. <laughs> I was hot anyway. <laughs> Damn, this motherfucker can't even keep the PJs on and watch the shit. You know them bitches be long sleeve and long pants. No bullshit. Got her some scary Snoopy PJs. I took them batches off. Did y'all watch the movie? Fuck no. <laughs> Annoying. But do you remember? You know what I was thinking about? Trick or treating now versus trick or treating when we grew up. Man, we need to be talking about trick or treating come Halloween time. You don't need to be, that don't need to be a topic on this podcast. Hey, we can talk about it again now. Unless you got something else you want to talk about. Because your black ass is sitting there with a closed iPad. Fuck I got something, I got something, I something else that we can talk about. Stop expecting people that you don't check on to check on you. Who does that? Everybody. Think about it. Stop expecting people, because this is what people say. You know how they say check on your strong friends? Mm. It's a myth. Nobody actually does it. Oh, yeah. Check on your strong friends, because they go through the most. Guess who's not checking on their strong friends? Everybody who read that. How do you know you're a strong friend? Right. Who's your strong friend? You think you're the strong friend. That's the bad thing. <laughs> Everybody read that and think, yeah, check on me. <laughs> That's the bad thing. The weakest thing. Fr- fucking you, your, no, fuck, you the <laughs> weak friend. But you know what? That's what I'm talking about. I think we got. I think I think in society now, people will get upset if they ain't heard from you, or you ain't. You know what I'm saying? You ain't hitting them up and asking them what they got going on. People will start to almost like vilify you. Like, man, y'all don't fuck with me. It's almost like I seen that dude on Instagram who said, "I always see people in my likes." Oh, what he said? I always see people in my views. But I never see him in my likes. And he was like, stop telling people you fuck with me, dog. Because I know you're just watching me hoping that I fail. And I'm like, yo, like, nah. Like, I don't think you're going to get that. Every, everybody has their own life. So you're not going to get that everyday support from certain people. You ain't going to hear from people all the time. And it don't mean that they don't fuck with you. Even if you can have a friend you ain't talked to in a minute, but he look at all of your stories, you know? Yeah. All of your posts. He that's, how I on- keep, that's how I keep up with a lot of people. Yep, and I, I might not always verbalize, but for me, handle your shit like a man or like a grown up, I'll say, because there's some women listening to this. For me, handle your shit and stop this looking and vilifying your friends and peers around you for not checking on you or not 
Having oh that bond, that that bitch didn't talk to me. I haven't talked to that bitch in a month and a half. Yo. Cause you never know what somebody going through too. That's you my thing. Know. But your black ass got on this podcast and said, I'm not about to tell people to achieve a goal type shit. And now look at what you're doing. Man, I feel like thing. that ain't saying to achieve a goal. I'm saying the people look, if I say, check on your strong friends. Check on your strong friends. That's what everybody gonna tell you. I'm telling you right now that your strong friends are, are, are you're not the strong friend, one. Two, you're not checking. I, I ask everybody listening to this podcast right now. How many times a week are you checking on your friends and just hitting them off to, hey, bro, I just wanted to check and see if you was good? How many of y'all? I guarantee if I was in a big auditorium with all of you ugly motherfuckers sitting in here, some of you would be sitting there like this, looking around. I mean, I'm being honest. Some of you will raise your hand and look, shout out to you. But in this world we live in, but sometimes, Terrence, you. Nigga stepping on what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's good. when he would get the mic thrown at his motherfucking ass. After you just stepped all over my Halloween tape. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> you hit me in the back. And my fucker talking when I'm talking. That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah. Terrence, there, are, there are people, though, that are the strong uh, friend. There are. But I'm telling, I'm trying to make a general message. Because we're not talking to the people that really have it. I'm talking to majority of you, a majority of y'all that I feel like it's going to relate to. You know how the teacher come in the classroom and said, nobody did their homework last night. This is ridiculous. But you did it. Or two or three people did it. She's still talking to the class as a whole. Even when she come in and say, everybody's in here talking. My class is getting ridiculous. You know what? Pop quiz. You were sitting there quiet the whole time. You can't really say, Miss Brown. But I wasn't even talking. Because, look, we're talking about a whole. We're talking about everybody. And all I'm trying to give y'all a full warning on is that, like, yo, the people in your life that haven't checked on you, not going to check on you. Your cousins, your family, even sometimes your brothers and sisters are not going to be there to say, hey, how are you doing mentally? How is everything going on? It's a myth. It's fake. Like, low-key, handle your shit. Because if you don't, Anybody else going to? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But here comes Terrell with the Devil's Abbey. But you good? Go ahead, be Devil's Abbey. Go. You can also change that and actually be that for somebody, and that's why it exists. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. You can definitely change and be that. But I'm if you know you somebody know battles demons, yeah, you can work to combat that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's situational. I'm not gonna say that it doesn't happen. More so than I'm just gonna put a general message out there from this angle. We putting a general message out there from this side of shit. Can we talk about what this nigga looks like? A fucking plum. What the fuck color is this you got Terrence, on, This is not even plum, boy. This is You thought mauve. that was mauve? This is You mauve. thought that was mauve? It looks like moss, boy. Nigga look like a bag of... You Your look like beer a... look like moss, boy. Algae. If we had a... If you was in a fish tank, they would love you. They'd just put you right by the window and let the algae eater just patch right to your beard. If you, you look a... like... you look. That color looks coral, boy. Fuck out of here. Okay, you got a wolf's, wolf's, you look like your beard made a wolf's bane. Why you keep talking about my beard like it's not stunning your beard? Weird beard, it's not. ass boy. You got a beard like you were swiping through. You know how you put a beard on your My Player or some shit? Number three. Oh, this is the longest one. That's what this nigga's beard looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I gave My Player a beard. <laughs> this nigga got an emoji beard. Basic beard, having ass Okay, well, nigga. what you got? Wee beard. You want to try to give you a Wii player beard? That don't look like a mountain upside down. <laughs> if they said Nintendo introduces the brand new Wii, I'm getting it. Nigga, just get a Switch. They just put out a new Switch this year. No, they did not. Know? Yes, they did. No, they didn't. They hey, said they, 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 put a new, they did put out a new no, Switch. No, they did not. A new Switch OLED. Sorry, Bitch ass nigga. Oh, oh, the screen different. But it's not a new game. It's just a different screen. But it's a new Switch. It got a completely it's not a new game, got OLED display. It's not a new game, though. Tech Corner. Let me tell y'all something real quick. Tech Corner. This is the only thing I wanted to say. Instagram is getting ready to bring ads to your Explore page and to profiles. And I think this is, and this is the only thing I got in the Tech Corner besides Apple getting ready to get rid of the lightning cable. Apple's getting They ready. only going to do MagSafe? The nah, little they, get, they, um, I forget what the name of it is. It's called EU or something like, or EP or something like that, but... They had a ruling that passed, I think, in July, but like it's, it could go into effect, and it could force Apple to get rid of using Lightning ports and only use USB-C. So everybody will just use USB-C. Think about how dope would that be for you to be able to charge your iPad, take it right out, charge your iPhone. Low-key, I think Apple, y'all need to do it. Like, I think Apple tries to keep the, the exclusivity with the Lightning port for the iPhone. Mm-hmm. 
and that's why they want to keep him. But either way, you're probably going to see Apple having a lightning port soon. Uh, I'm sorry, having a USB-C port soon. But IG that has been sense. under fire. I know y'all been on y'all Instagram, and you have scrolled your TL, and you have seen ad, 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 ad. But guess what? They just came out, and they said that even though they got backlash, they are adding more ads. And these ads are going to be on your Explore page. I want y'all to think about it. When you go to your Explore page, you can go to your Explore page right now. You're not going to see, like, ads on nah, there. Nah, that's true. You just see motherfuckers that you could follow. You just see motherfuckers you could follow, things that you might like. Uh-huh. You don't see any ads. You know what I'm saying? Also, Terrell, if you click one of those profiles, this is about to be a reality. Click uh, that first one. When you scroll up, you're going to see ads in the middle of scrolling somebody's profile. Why you're going to see a this? Dyson vacuum joint on my profile? That's ridiculous. I think that is madness. Hold on, wait. So when somebody comes to my profile, you know what I'm saying? They're going to see me, me. It won't show in your grid, but if they go to the scroll view, they're going to start adding them in there. And you see, I can't even say it won't show in your grid because I don't know, but I don't think that that would be smart. So I think they're going to take advantage of the timeline thing. I want y'all to think about TikTok, right? When you go on somebody's TikTok, it's rare that you just look at the grid. You might just click mm-hmm. their video and then you might go like this and scroll up their joint like that because TikTok has invented almost like taken over the scroll and keep watching and scroll and watch thing. People don't even do that with IG like that no more. People are just looking at the stories. A lot more people I feel like look at stories than they are scrolling their TL. So now with Instagram being more video based, think about how many people have reels all over their page. Some people are straight page or straight reels. You better see nothing but ads. And honestly, Instagram understands the backlash that they can receive, but they say they're going forward. They it's crazy, bro. It's crazy because ads will take over the world. You're going to have an ad in front of your microwave. 30 seconds. Deep. Damn. <laughs> I got to wait for this ad. To heat the breadsticks up? No, nah, that's Damn. ridiculous. If you heat heating up breadsticks, you a fool. Hard-ass breadstick. You get that joint. Motherfucker be soft. be soft. It's going to be soft for 30 seconds. You better hit it while it's... But while it's like that, you hit it like a breadstick, boy. The Olive Garden one. Long head ass. Fuck out of here, boy. Pause. Fuck out of here. That's crazy. <laughs> That's how you can piss the nigga off. <laughs> Just pause him. <laughs> you actually look at pause like 50-year-olds do. And they say the most pause-worthy shit. <laughs> you want me talking to a 50-year-old? I don't do pause. You talking to a 50-year-old man about, look, his ball handling skills. See, when he moving, when he picking his ball up. And he balling, and he moving his balls, and you be like, oh, gee, <laughs> oh, gee, hold up, pause, and they get pissed off. <laughs> I don't do that bullshit. Look, first, they don't even know what's going on. What is he talking about? He's saying when you say ball, he's, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I'm not. <laughs> Look, then they start saying offensive shit. Whoa, I'm not a, whoa, <laughs> chill, G. You way off the cliff. He's trying to say him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but, um, but yeah. You got a movie suggestion of the week? Movie suggestion of the week is going to be Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Wow. It's on Netflix, man. I'm going to keep it 100. That's one of my fantasy films. Remember we talked about role play? Imagine role playing with your girl on some Mr. and Mrs. Smith nah, that was shit. And it worked, for, it worked for Brad and Angelina. Worked for Brad and Angelina. Look, you get the Nerf guns. And yeah, that's how you start y'all, y'all joint. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. If you haven't seen Mr. and Mrs. Smith, it's Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, they both secret agents, but they're married. They've been married for years. They both have been secret agents for years, and they both get a mission to kill another secret agent, which happens to be each other. So they're trying to maintain their secret agent job while being a couple. She's still cooking dinner every night. He's still coming home from work. Man, when I tell you that movie, one of my faves growing up, and it's one of the movies where you just feel like, man, this some, this some inspirational couple shit. I understand what happened after the... Well, I'm not going to say that. But Y'all that's my real. movie suggestion of the week. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It's on Netflix. Turn up. That's dope because Mr. What I want, one thing I will say, Mr. and Mrs. Smith came out in 2005. Me and Terrence were at that point 11 years old. And um, it's crazy because Brad and Angelina got together based on... If you don't know, Brad and Angelina. Brad Pitt was dating Jennifer Aniston. And Jai like left her for... Angelina Jolie, because they had so much crazy chemistry on that set. And if you look at the film, you can see that it's not 100%. like, it's almost like they got too much real good. Like, yeah, they had that. that they just like, they really good. liked each other and they did. But their daughter that they had a year after or a year and a half or two years after that movie, she's, another, she's like 
I think she's like 14, 15, 16, 17 now, something like that. Yeah, she has Because it's been years. And it's like, damn, I was old enough to know when I, I can I know how your parents got together. Nah, yeah, you're right. I saw that film. But damn, that's crack. Right? Damn, um, the movie's so damn good, it birthed motherfuckers that's living their regular lives yeah. now. <laughs> Look, this is how Hollywood think Mr. and Mrs. Smith, too. And we have yeah. Angelina Jolie's daughter. All right, look. My movie suggestion of the week is This Is The End. Um, okay. Hey, just put it back on Netflix. I don't know if you know. Nah, it's a great movie. But This Is The End. It came out 2013. Seth Rogen, Evan, Evan Goldberg. Um, one of their classics. As they have hella of them. But it's hella celebrities that got stuck in the same house during an apocalypse. I just told y'all to make sure y'all doing y'all spooky night shit. If mm-hmm. you don't want to watch something scary and you want to kind of watch some funny shit, that movie is hilarious and it's got like a little scary twist to it. And it is hilarious. Craig Robinson, um, Jonah Hill, fucking, what's my man name? <laughs> Who? Danny, um, what's Danny's last Danny name? Danny Myers? Is it Danny Myers? No, Danny Myers is a battle rapper. Bar okay. God. What is wrong with you? His name is Danny um, McBride. McBride. I knew Danny it was McBride, someone McBride, James Franco. Yeah. That joint is hilarious. Kevin Hart's in the beginning of that joint? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of people in it. Um, but yeah, that's my movie suggestion of the week. Fun watch. It's a fun watch. It's not like a, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. 100%. A lot very, of y'all was, might have been a little smart man. Very smart man. Oh! Turn up, man. Welcome to the uh, Sports Topics NFL Picks. NBA season is back. NBA preseason. Turn up. Did y'all see them Wizards against them Golden State Warriors? Yeah. Ah, shut up. Bradley Bill back. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man, I'm glad to see the NBA season back. Bron says he doesn't have a relationship with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's wicked. But you know what? Kareem, watch out. Cause nah, I'm no bullshit. Cause when I retire, I'm Bron. <laughs> anyway, respect to Kareem though. But NFL picks, we're putting respect out there first and foremost from week four. First person that I want, first team I want to put respect out there for is the G-Men, the Giants. I'll give y'all respect. Y'all stepped out there and beat the Bears, even though it was a slugfest, and I don't think that y'all going to win this week's game. Sorry! Uh, Show them love, respect like Respect for the you Giants. Uh, I put respect on San Francisco. I thought that y'all was going to go out there and get dogged by the Rams. Y'all went out there and actually did the, uh, the opposite. I want to put respect on Seattle. Put up 48 points up against Man. Uh, Houston. Yep. 48 points. No, 48 points up against the uh, the Lions. 48 points up against the Lions. That was impressive as hell. Mm-hmm. Almost 50 points. I don't remember the last time Washington ever put up that many points. That's cray. Um, I'll put respect on the Jets. The Jets went out there and beat who, Terrell? Steelers. Jets went out there and beat the Steelers. As I, I said, they would. Yep. Wilson's back. J-E-T-S. Jets. 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 Let's get it. Turn up. Shout out New York, man. A, a, a W weekend for New York. Putting respect on the motherfucking Eagles, man. The best team in football. Mm-hmm. The Philadelphia Eagles. And you know what? Dwayne told us. Yeah, my he... cousin Dwayne told us at the Freak Neat <laughs> 80s party before the <laughs> yeah. before the uh the start of the season that we said we only gonna lose like two or three games. And they looking like they only gonna lose about two or three games. But you yeah. know what? Well, I'll save my take for that later. Fuck the Raiders. I don't give a damn if we lost. Fuck y'all. I'm not showing y'all no love. All of y'all Raiders fans that wanted love, fuck y'all. Yeah, I'll put respect on Dallas. I didn't think that we would beat Dallas. Dallas came out there. I didn't think that we would. I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't think they would beat us bad. They definitely came out there and beat us. Uh, put respect on the Cowboys. The Cowboys definitely, definitely are starting to show like they gonna be all right. If mm-hmm. y'all look like this before, that I will come say back. this. Who did the Cowboys really play that was a threat? The yeah. Bengals. Are they? They played the Bengals. The Steelers had a dope defense. They had T.J. Watt on the field. Think about it. When we played the Jaguars, the Jaguars weren't who they were, who they are now. So can we really give the Cowboys a week one field goal victory win over the Bengals and say... They won. Yeah, I mean, they won. But I don't think the Bengals, just like how y'all got out there and wasn't y'all sales week one. You know how everybody got out there and was rocky week one? Uh, hey, look, we'll give it to you. But I'm just saying, winning, beating us, that's not really the best thing to be happy about because we some trash for real, for real. It was supposed to be any given Sunday, but honestly, y'all, I'm losing a lot of faith in my commanders. Come that, on, let's get it. Yeah. NFL picks. Let's move on. You know what, Raiders? I'll show y'all a little love. Got y'all, to. That y'all put up a – Devontae Adams ended up having 100 yards. He did tra- – the PS2 locked his ass up, though. That's why he had to move on the other side of the field. But – 
Um, Josh Jacobs had 200 yards. So whatever. I hate y'all. Whatever. Fuck y'all. Win some more rings. And with that being said, the Thursday night game that was yesterday, if you're listening now or watching, oh, Jesus Christ. was the Denver Broncos <laughs> hosting the Indianapolis Colts. Believe it or not, I am picking the Broncos to win this game at a mile high. I'm picking y'all to win. Y'all better win bum ass niggas. I'm picking us to win too just because the Colts have been equally as bad as us and they don't have JT and Shaq Barrett is not playing. I feel like we'll be able to do all right. But let me just tell you something. If we go out here and lose to the motherfucking Colts and give them a win while we're at home, I don't know what I'm going to do, y'all. Y'all don't know what it's like for me. And this, I'm just going to say this. I'm not going to spend too long. But none of y'all teams had the hype that my team had. We got Russ, and they gave us hella primetime games. When people was picking their Super Bowl picks, they top five teams that's going to the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. we was up there. Terrence will tell y'all that it's the, the truth. I was hype in the beginning, but then I started telling Terrence, I need to see first because this is what our fans do. This is what our media does. Terrence, did I not? Nah, you're right. And so I just need to... I just need to see first, but I'm going to pick us to win. Yeah, man. I, hopefully y'all can get out there and win because watching the games with Terrell is just, uh, I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. How do you think I feel watching the game with you? Our games be entertaining. This that nigga Terrell complains the whole game. Terrell be complaining the whole game. Oh, my God. See, nah, 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 and that's this person, and that's Christopher so-and-so, and that's it with this. I'm like, damn, this nigga don't even like his team. You can't even go to the meet and greet. <laughs> Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Nah, they wouldn't like me. They would kick me out. Because I have <laughs> questions that oh, these other motherfuckers ain't going to Yeah, Terrell, so we gotta, the first person you get an autograph from is Melvin Gordon. Hell no. I would be like, get off the... <laughs> hey, boom! <laughs> yep, you can sign it. Sign Fumbles Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that nigga so much. I'm All right, come on, Let's move it. Let's move it. All right, the, another London game, 930. We got the G-Men, Giants, at the Green Bay Packers. I pick the in Packers. London at 9.30. I'm picking the Packers, too. I think the Giants, they won three games. I don't think you're going out there and beating the Packers. If y'all do, I will be very impressed. But I'll be more impressed than that Chicago win, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I just Y'all got to show me something. I don't think y'all better go out there and do it. Shout out Saquon, best in the league. Yeah, and they, they want us to put respect on the Giants. <laughs> y'all don't put no respect on us, but low-key, do y'all want me to pick y'all over Green Bay? I don't know. I don't. I, I just don't. Y'all have to prove us wrong. If y'all beat Green Bay, that's where the respect really lies. This is the real proof of game. All right, Pittsburgh at Buffalo. Buffy. Big Buffy? Buffy at home. Y'all not beating them. Sorry, Pittsburgh. Kenny Pickett is getting out there because they Ooh. said fuck Trubisky. If he could get out there and beat Buffalo his first game, Buffalo is like that dude you could beat. Remember the hound was fighting that motherfucker with the fire sword? If you <laughs> slash through this motherfucker's sword, you chop his motherfucker in half. Buffalo could go out there and have a tough time, but I don't think against Kenny Pickett, even though they kind of banged up. I feel like Buffy is going to win. I, too, am picking Buffalo to win this game against Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Pittsburgh, but if you go out there and win, you got my respect. All right, bet. Chargers going up to the Browns to play at first energy, and I'm picking the Chargers. I'm going to go ahead and pick the Browns. You're I think cool. in first energy, I'm going to pick the Browns to step out there, Jacoby Reset. And beat the Chargers. I know that's an unpopular pick, but guess what? The Chargers are another Keenan Damn. Allen is back. Okay, watch. Keenan Allen don't play defense. Is you Nick Chubb playing? Yes. Mm hmm. This is the week where he's, you know. You got the Chargers fucked up. The Chargers are going to win this game. You want to put bread on it? We can put bread on it if you want. Because hold on, wait. Let me go back and look at my last couple weeks. Well, and look, it's right here. Did the Chargers win last week? They won 34-24 against the Texans. Mm -hmm. The week As before we that, the Chargers lost to the Chiefs. They beat Jacksonville. Oh, yeah. And the week before that, they lost to the Chiefs. We thought that Jacksonville was going to go out there and beat them. The week before that, they lost to the Chiefs. Week ones, they beat the Raiders. They lost to Jacksonville, though, right? Mm-hmm. And they look terrible. Now, you're right, you're right, you're right. They look terrible against Jacksonville. So that's why I said, you know what? I'm just going to pick the Browns just to go on a limb and be that person that, that is different. I think Cleveland, let's get a home win. Like, come on. The Chargers are going to win this game. We'll see. 
We got Houston Texans at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Sorry, mm. Lovey. <laughs> Sorry, Lovey Smith. I haven't picked the Texans all year. The Jaguars are going to win this game. I'm picking Jaguars, too. I think the popular pick is Jaguars. I've been trying to have a good record this year. Mm. I'm not going to go against the green. I want to believe. I like that dude Robinson for the Jaguars. I like him. Shout out to Jacksonville Jaguars fans. Hey, Florida. Let's go get this Hurricane Dub. So we got much more bigger. We got we got bigger fish to fry for real. We got fish outside. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, that's not funny. I mean, you know, that my bad. Not, <laughs> but you know, we not worried about. Look, Houston, y'all got y'all shiny stadium over there. Ain't shit going on in Houston. Bad bitches. Bad. <laughs> you coming and we getting rugged. We playing for the city. For real. Turn up Jacksonville. I'm picking Jacksonville to win again. Uh, division rival on this one. Bears going to see the Vikings. I think Jettas. Oh. Let's go. That's what I was, that's Unless what this trade goes through. Bear to who? Cooper Cup. Well, Jettas? That would be the dumbest thing the Rams ever do. That would be dumb as what shit. What are you talking about? No, I'm talking about my fantasy. Oh. Oh, you about to get Cooper Cup? I, I just I proposed a trade for Jettas and Cooper Cup. They say he's on pace to outperform his, outperform his last year. And Jettas will have quiet ass weeks. So why would somebody do that? Why was I'm trying to catch a nigga slipping? Oh, okay. I yeah, wanted to yeah, say yeah. Jettas, that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he don't know the type of weeks Jettas been having unless he go do his research. Unless you do your research. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm picking. I'm pick, I'm picking Minnesota on the strength that day. I look skull. They are in Minnesota. I've been to Minnesota. I've seen those fans. They ride. It's gonna be the purple people eaters out there. Mm-hmm. Chicago. Y'all need a first round pick. <laughs> Y'all need another first round pick, and then next thing, next thing you know, y'all gonna be Bur- uh, Burrow and yeah, it ain't looking good for them. If if you can get Justin Fields a better O line and a first round pick receiver, bro, he actually might be a dog. I like Justin Fields. You know what? You know what? You know what? Bears. I'm I'm gonna try to have a. Ne- I'm gonna be negative. Bears. Your Terrence. They're not gonna go out there and beat Jettas and them. They're not. They're not Terrence. Not changing. I'm picking. I'm picking Vikings, Bears. But I want to see y'all win that game. Go do it. Bear down. Lions at Patriots. Lions. That's crazy because I'm picking New England. I think Bill Belichick goes out there and beats Detroit. I think Detroit think they about to go in there and win. Guess what, Detroit? Do you know Mac Jones is hurt, right? For real? Yeah. For how long? Not playing on Sunday. <laughs> Damn. So who's playing? Uh, the motherfucker that uh plays for them. What's his name? Well, you know what. Guess what? Their quarterback is uh, what's his name? Fuck, Patriots. Not Mac. I forget. They got a backup nigga. Some I don't know. I don't know who it is. It ain't Mac. So, you know what, y'all? I'm picking the uh, Bailey Zap in line to start versus Lions. Guess what? I'm still. Picking the Patriots. Hey, what's wrong with you? Do you do you think the Lions that are just trash? Oh, is Amon Ross still out? I think he might still be out. I don't think that Zap looked that bad. I think the. I don't think he did either. This it might could be a, be a Brady Bledsoe moment where Zap get out there and zap that Lions defense. The the, the Patriots are not going to be able to put up enough points. The Lions are the number one offense in the league. The highest scoring team in the league right now is the Detroit Lions. They just put up forty five. Without Amon Ra. And I wonder what the standings Come are. Come on, bro. What the standings are. What the standings is. The standings. The Patriots are one and three. Man. And the Lions are one and three. Yep. So you know what? Patriots. Get out there and bust them Lions up. Dan Campbell. Oh, they play them. with grit. They play with grit. I'm sick of hey, it. Motherfucker hating one pride. Lions, let's go. They got one win against us, and we suck. So if they're so great, why haven't they been able to beat a good team yet? Patriots. That's not unfair to say about them. Dan Cannibal's going be like, that's so unfair for you to we say. We play with grit. We, we play. I don't give a fuck. Win. Because you can play with grit they all you on, want, all and y'all be 3-13. and They're going to win on Sunday. Let's get it. We'll see, Lions. I'm going Patriots, and I really want the Patriots to win that game now. <laughs> <laughs> Seahawks going down to Mercedes-Benz. No, Mercedes-Benz is Atlanta. Um, they going to the Superdome to play the New Orleans Saints, and Geno has been looking better than Russ. I'm picking Seahawks. Hawks. I'm 
picking the Saints. I'm picking the Saints at home. I'm picking the Seahawks. AK is back. I think Kamara, I, I, hopefully, Kamara will play. But even if not, watch the Seahawks go out there and say, y'all know, show them who you are. <laughs> watch. The Seahawks need that 12th man. We just put up 48 points. 48. Yeah, Gino been looking and what did the Saints, better than Russ. What did the Saints do last week? They lost to um, not Brady and them. They no, not that. That was a uh, Saints went out there last week, and they lost to Minnesota. They got cheated. If you are if you are a Saints fan, they got cheated last week with the penalties. Saints. Did you see they highlights? One in three, Seattle. Go out there and beat that ass. <laughs> <laughs> you, if you didn't watch, I don't know if you watched the Saints. In Vikings highlights. I feel bro. like I did, but why am I on that last drive? They was cheating the Saints. They had, they called that bullshit uh, pass interference or holding or it, it was bullshit. It was a couple penalties that was bullshit. It, it, they, the Saints are cursed, but I'm picking the Saints. All right, we got Miami. The uh, oh, I'm sorry, Miami at New York Jets. Yeah, I am picking Miami. Yeah, get well soon, Tua. But I'm gonna pick the Jets. I'm gonna pick the. Uh, the Dolphins, too. I think that team, even Teddy Bridgewater can go out there and win this, this game. This is a rivalry. This is a rival know. game. The Jets look good, though. The Jets might fuck around and win. The Jets could fuck around and win. I think Miami still has a good team outside of Tua. I don't think that Teddy Bridgewater is also a bad quarterback. I think the I think Miami has the tools to beat the, a team like the Jets without their starter. They could keep it going. I'm picking the Jets. Fuck it. Hold on, watch. I'm picking Miami. We'll see. All right, bet. Falcons at Tom Brady now. Buccaneers. I'm picking the Buccaneers. I picked the Bucs too. Tom Brady just had to hire a divorce lawyer. You heard about that? Rumors. Rumors, but either way, that's going to boil me up. I'm going out here and getting a W. Nah, yeah, no bullshit. Because what oh, you think we'll we saying in the stands if we, uh, oh, whoa, they not in This that nigga man. about to go out there and have an early Willie Beeman game. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing up <laughs> his head not in the game. Man, no bullshit. You could go out there and just... You right. I like Mike Evans. I think even though they got washed by the Chiefs, I think they actually didn't look that bad, though. No, nah, yeah. Is, you know what I'm saying? I another team. I think the Chiefs... Y'all, you know I, I favor the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. But I'm picking Buffalo. All right, the last 1 o'clock game of the evening. You mean Buccaneers. <laughs> I'm picking Buffalo. <laughs> oh, my bad. I'm picking the Buccaneers. Tampa. Turn up, Tampa. I don't know y'all's little slogan, but... Look, our Weird ass <laughs> pirate motherfuckers. Uh, last one o'clock game of the week: Tennessee Titans versus the Washington. We are <laughs> Commanders. I'm gonna keep it a hundo. Titans. Derrick Henry last two games he's looked like Derrick Henry, and if he gonna look good in any gonna, team, uh-huh. it's gonna be uh, <laughs> Derrick Henry. Boom! I can see him running niggas over. Bobby McCain. Who y'all think I'm gonna pick? Y'all know what loyalty be? Y'all know what loyalty be? That's me. I'm picking the Washington motherfucking command. Let me tell you something. Hey, Derrick Henry. I know you had a good game the last two couple weeks, but you coming to Washington. Welcome to D.C. And we, and we debuting our burgundy. We are so trash. Y'all debuting the burgundy. We already wore it in preseason, but it's going to be the first time we actually were in the game. At home? Ooh, that's going to be clean. But we suck. So, I'm going to pick Washington just because that'll make my Sunday feel good. But I'm telling y'all, the last three Sundays have been rough. Rough. Tennessee, I've picked y'all every week up until now. Think about it. I always be like, Tennessee. Tennessee. I'm actually a little nervous with Tennessee coming to town. I'm picking the Titans. Traylon Burks. Watch. He's been doing better. And hey, hey, look, you want to have your rookie hurt. have a big game? I think he got hurt. I don't know if he's playing. But I like Washington's receiving core. If y'all can put points up, y'all can go out there and get a dub. Titans is a team you can beat. But I just don't trust Wentz. So I am picking the Titans. Um, I am not blaming you at all. The most sacked motherfucker in the league. Come on, man. Let's let's go before the the battery die. Let's get it. The first four minutes. Is it blinking? No. But I feel like we can. Four minutes. I'm sorry. The first four o'clock game of the evening. The San Francisco... 
49ers against the Carolina Ron Rivera's, I mean Panthers. <laughs> I'm going with San Fran. San Fran has the best defense in the league. The Panthers ain't doing shit with them, especially okay. with Baker. Didn't y'all just say y'all had the best defense in the league? We do not. Uh, look at our right, last games and look at this. Even though we beat the San Francisco 49ers. I'm going with San Fran. Carolina, if you shock. Then I wouldn't be too mad at that, but I'm gonna go with San Fran. I'm picking San Fran too. We got the best team in the league currently, the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Arizona Cardinals. This is y'all big game. Let me tell you something. It's a big game, Philly. I'm picking the Cardinals to win. I don't Ooh. think the Eagles go five and zero. Oh. Eagles fans, y'all not perfect, and y'all know it. But y'all look good. But I think Kyler Murray is going to go out here and scramble, scramble, scramble last minute and get them down the field, and they're going to win by like three or something like that. That's what I think. Now, if y'all go out there and bust their ass, then you get even more respect from me. But I think Kyler Murray and them are going to upset the Eagles, and it's going to be their first loss to K1. Because Jalen, Jalen Hurts, let me show you how I do this run around shit. And let me see. Is D-Hop back? I can tell you if D-Hop back. Let me just hop in my fantasy app. D-Hop might be back. And then you're looking at Kyler, Hollywood, and D Hop. Nah, Hopkins is still suspended. He got suspended for, for drug drugs, right? PD PDs. PD. Yeah, PEDs. Damn. When is his first game back? DeAndre Hopkins first. DeAndre Hopkins returns. The first six games, T. So he ain't back till week seven. Damn. Well, believe it or not, I haven't picked against him all year, except when they played us. I'm picking Philly to win this game. I think Philadelphia shows why they're so dominant here. I mean, I don't think anybody has put up a fight for real against Philly. For real. Yeah. For real. I mean, mm -hmm. you can say the Lions did, but low key. Yeah. Philly is that team, dog. I put respect on them because we seen them. They punched us in the mouth. You know, you get your ass beat by somebody, you say he could fight. Yeah. <laughs> Nigga can fight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to pick right. Philly. Cowboys going to LA to SoFi to play the Rams. 425. I am picking the Rams. Mm -hmm. I don't think um, Cooper Rush is as perfect as they say he is. And that line, I want to see what y'all going to do with Aaron Donald. I just want to see how you respond to that because you got to get the ball out faster. Yeah. I'm actually going to pick LA too. I think, wow, it's a lot of prove it games mm -hmm. this year. And I think if Cowboys go out there and beat LA, now we're really talking about them in a different light. Yeah. For sure. You know what I'm saying? And but L.A. looks tr looks terrible this year. Beat L.A. in L.A.? Yeah, L.A. doesn't look the best. Matt Stafford leads the league in interceptions again already. When you got ball hawk Trayvon Diggs coming, I don't know. I'm going to pick L.A. I'm going to pick L.A., but Cowboys, if y'all win that game, one, I'll be sick. Two, I'll have to put respect on y'all name again. I'm picking L.A. too. All right, the 8 o'clock game. This is the Sunday night game. is uh, Cincinnati Bengals at... The Baltimore Ravens. It's criminal that we had to wait until week five to get Lamar in prime time. Yeah. But um, I'm going with the Ravens. I'm going with the Ravens, too. Wow, we picked the same. I'm going with Lamar and them Ravens, Even man. though I think the Bengals are getting in rhythm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just remember him running and doing the spin move between the niggas and running the touchdown. Yeah, I don't this know. is another weak rivalry uh, between Bengals and uh. And it's a redemption game for Lamar, too, because it's arguable that the Bengals wouldn't have beat Lamar. I mean, wouldn't have beat the Ravens if Lamar didn't get hurt last year. Yeah. And, and Lamar and Ravens, y'all got to play all four quarters this week, man. Y'all can't have yet another week where y'all go up oh, yeah. and then let the team come back. What's going on with that defense? Right. What's up? I thought the Ravens had a, like a, a reputable defense. Right. We all going to be watching. We'll be watching. Hey, look, in the Monday night game, the last game of week five, it's going to be the Raiders. I know you got something to say about this. Raiders at Kansas City Chiefs. You know who I'm picking. My homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking Pat. Two motherfuckers that I hate. Raiders. I hate y'all. But please. <laughs> <laughs> please go out here and beat Pat Mahomes. Let me tell you something, though. Chiefs fans. Let me just cut the air. Because I've been a Broncos fan 24 years, right? And so it's a lot of people that think I hate the Chiefs because of Pat Mahomes. A lot of people think I've only hated the Chiefs the past four or five years because of Pat Mahomes. 
I'm a real Broncos fan. My chief hate comes from Tony Gonzalez, Trent Green, Priest Holmes, the Dick Vermeil days. 2003 to 2006 is how long I've hated the Chiefs. When we used to whoop their ass before they got Alex Smith, I've always hated these motherfuckers. I hated them. We just have not beat these motherfuckers since they got my home, so my hate is amplified. But Raiders, y'all beat our ass. Now go out there and beat their ass. Please. <laughs> Please. I'm picking my homeboy and the Chiefs. I can't lie. Pat Mahomes is out there going he crazy. Going crazy, man. He getting ready to get that MVP. It's funny because I hate Mahomes, but if he came to our team, I would get a 15 jersey so fast. Yeah. He better get an MVP. And look, and he's pushing P. <laughs> <laughs> Your white coworker trying to right. Man, That's how my doctor is. Yeah, you're right. Man, uh, come on, y'all. Let's get to these customers. We're out here pushing P. All right, let me talk to you real quick. <laughs> Let's get to these Ooh. customers. Hey, look, man. Um, like I said, fellas, um, do the shit. Yeah. Do the cringy shit. And your I'm going to say this. Your girl is, it, is it going? I got you. No, you ain't have to do it. You ain't have to say that. If anybody's wondering why I got this sweater from, I got it from H&M. Turn up. Y'all know I always share the goods with y'all. It's chill. But look, okay. if you're going to get sick at any time of the year, Ooh. it's going to be right now. No, Ronnie. 